can see it. All right. We're here, we're live. Ladies and gentlemen, we are watching a Vancouver Canucks playoff game for real with people in the stands. Now listen, I, like, I, 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 count, I count 2020, I do count it. It counts as the playoffs. They made it into the playoffs. They finished third in the division in 2020. So you gotta give Jim Benning uh, his flowers for that. But this is the first time that we're gonna see Vancouver Canucks fans in the arena since 2014, 2015. You gotta get excited about that. Now I wanna, I wanna do a, a quick check-in with everybody uh, just in the chat right now. If you can, tell me where you're from. I wanna know exactly where you're from, where you're tuning in from in the chat, real important. And I wanna run you through a list. And this is for the Vancouver Canuck hardcores who have been around forever and seen a lot of bad stuff. Um, the last time that you guys were in the playoffs and could actually go to a game, uh, you lost to the Flames in, in uh, six games in the first round, 2014-2015. Leading scorers, Henrik Sedin, Daniel Sedin, Radam Verbata, Nick Benino. Nick Benino had 39 points that year. Wow. Chris Higgins, Alexander Burroughs, Yannick Hansen, Alex Edler, Sean, Ma Sean Mathias. Leaf great Sean Mathias and some young kid who played 68 games. His name was Bo Horvat. He only had 25 points. Bust. Anyway, hi. Welcome to the stream. We are going to have some fun because honestly, uh, Vancouver, you deserve this. We got Kelowna coming in. We got Chicago coming in. We got Norway, North Carolina, Brampton, Vermont, Victoria, Seattle, Uranus. Wow. My anus? I don't know. Uh, Winnipeg, Buffalo, Ohio. Gee. Well, a lot of people from Ohio, too. I love this. I love this. How, how's it going, everybody? Welcome to the stream. Listen, we're going to have some fun. And yes, we're going to talk right through the uh, the anthem because um, I don't know why Sportsnet televises an anthem. Uh, you don't have to televise the anthem, but they do it. Uh, really excited to be hanging out with you. And we're going to do this for the entire Vancouver Canucks series. So if you're up late on the East Coast or if you're up at normal time on the West Coast, you can hang out with me every single game. And I think it's going to be a lot of fun now. Uh, I'm kind of doing this to spite the Nashville Predators, which puts me directly on side with Vancouver Canucks fans. So, you know, the enemy of your enemy is your friend, right? And uh, guys, my Canucks are taking on the Nashville Predators. That's what's going on. Uh, in all seriousness, no, this is kind of a like a really exciting night because Vancouver has kind of got the shaft for like a better part of a decade, or Vancouver fans, that is. And it's like, kind of nice to see him in again like this is kind of this has gone a little bit crazy how how is it possible that vancouver was this bad for this long well 
succession of bad general managers uh, who did basically whatever the owner wanted. And then they got a real hockey person in who hired real hockey people. And look at that. They look great. They sound great. And they play great. It's beautiful. It's a beautiful thing. Now, um, uh, I'm looking at uh, I'm looking at some of the, the chat. Hey, Adam, listening from Kitchener. Love STP and love that you're doing this. Oh, thank you. What's my favorite U2 song? That's from DJ Dottie. Is, the, is it Daddy or Dottie? Uh, favorite U2 song is Vertigo. I love that song. And also, uh, still haven't found what I'm looking for. But we don't like U2 this series, okay? We, we're not friends with Bono right now. I don't care how many people's lives he saved for, through his charitable efforts, and they're significant, okay? Right now, we're Vancouver Canucks fans. We are squarely on Team Vancouver, and that's what we're going to make happen. Um, now, let's talk about, uh, Adam, uh, thoughts on Mike Gillis and his time in Vancouver. Um, I guess, listen, you're talking about the best Vancouver Canucks team outside of uh, the early 90s team that made the finals as well. Um, I would argue that the early 90s team had more high-end talent, uh, but they were kind of constrained by budget. Like, they almost brought in Wayne Gretzky. Like, it would have been like Wayne Gretzky and Pavel Bure playing together. Can you imagine? Um, but, uh, like, you know, the Mike Gillis era is like they spent to the cap, they spent big money, they brought in big stars, and they had big stars, Daniel and Henrik. Henrik and you really don't need to do much when you have those kind of guys around. So um, I liked that era a lot. But I think it's interesting that Mike Gillis didn't move on to be a general manager elsewhere. There was actually like a weird story. I don't know if Canucks fans have ever confirmed this. Um, uh, but uh, um, that that Mike Gillis in like game five or game six of the Stanley Cup finals in 2011 against Boston was like toasting the success of the team and that they were like ready to celebrate because they thought they were going to win. I don't know if that's still, if that's like a conspiracy theory along with, um, uh, what is it that, uh, Zidane Ochara said that last year it was something like, Oh, the Canucks were practicing how they would win the Stanley cup. And we used that as built bulletin board material, which obviously Kevin BX has said, yeah, no, we didn't do that. Um, but yeah, Mike Gillis was, he was a pretty successful general manager. And I'm just kind of surprised that, he hasn't been elsewhere. You know what I'm saying? Um, Adam, your your favorite U2 song has to be uh, Bloody Sunday. You know what is a great song? Beautiful Day is also a great one. Um, I don't know, man. That, that, U2's got a lot of hits. It's hard to... See, here's the thing. It's hard to hate a couple of things about this, right? This is why it's kind of funny. Um, it's pretty hard to hate the Nashville Predators. Uh, just generally, Nashville rules. It's a great place. And, uh, and also, the Predators are like this team that shouldn't have done anything this year and did anyway. And that's pretty cool. Uh, how can you not root for that? Uh, the Vancouver Canucks are a team that I flat out did not believe in when this, Oh, we got the, we're going to drop the puck here. We'll see if the ref actually drops it. Oh no, he did. That's good. Just can't stand when they do the fake drop thing, by the way, uh, shout out to Natalie who donated, uh, um, uh, 20 bucks. That's my wife guys. My wife is donating money to the channel. Uh, we stand, uh, Logan wants me to fix the blue mark behind me. No, Logan, I won't. I won't Logan. Um, I got to think that, that, uh, you know, the, 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 the Nashville predators, I'm just kind of watching Rick Tockett looks pretty chill. He looks calm. I like that. Sheldon Keefe looks like he's just wound watching leaf series. His, his shoulders are right up past his ears. He's so freaked out. Um, I got to think that uh, there's a little bit of, you know, nervousness going through the Canucks right now. But uh, they're so flipping good. Like, look at this shot already. Yeah, this is a, like, they're, they're so good. And I think what, if Nashville's going to have a chance, and they don't have a chance, they're going to have to play, like, full defense, boring New York Islander hockey. And I don't know if they're going to do it. Hey, oh, hey, Mike Schmidt, thank you so much for donating. Um uh, 10 subscriptions. Guys, if you're getting a subscription, thank Mike Schmidt. And also, enjoy the subscription because the VIP episodes are a lot of fun. Um, okay, so one of the things we were talking about on the podcast today, big hit, Dakota Joshua, love him. Oh, here we go. We got a turnover. We got a turnover. Dakota Joshua, former Leaf pick. Not that I'm salty about it. Ooh. I, uh, I said if there were two guys on Vancouver I thought were going to score first, it would be Joshua or Teddy Bluger. You know, the, let's just play off names. Steve said McDonough for uh, Nashville, by the way. Yeah, see, this is what the Canucks do so well. They're just buzzing right off the front. I like this. So here's what I didn't believe about the Canucks, and I, I just want to talk to you, talk you through this. I didn't believe in Rick Tockett because of his, his, his uh, um, record in 
Oh, oh, his record with the Coyotes. Um, and then, uh, you know, and then I wasn't like the Canucks have always kind of been loaded with talent and never did anything with it. Uh, even under Travis Green and then Bruce Boudreaux, it's like, oh, they had a good spurt here or there, but it never really turned in anything. And then this season, it all just kind of came together. And like the team got better after trading Bo Horvat. How? How's that even possible? Um, anyway, I, uh, I stand corrected as I often do. Um, and honestly, it's been a lot of fun to watch. I'm really excited to go through this series with you guys. I think we're going to have some fun. And you know, it's cool too. I, I used to do um, late night radio. And it was my favorite, favorite shift. I used to do 10 p.m. to 2 a.m. So I get to kind of do that again with you, which is super fun. Um, this is going to be this is going to be a great time. Um, by the way, if you're if you're checking in with me and uh, the time of the game, Sportsnet just pulled it off. But I'm at 1811. I'm going to be announcing that throughout 1807 now. So basically just coming around 18 minutes so we can be on the same page there. Um, yeah, see. Uh, you know, looking at the game so far, there's not a whole lot to say other than the Canucks look real good and fast. I'm a little uh, a little jealous of a couple things on both teams. First off, I'm jealous the Preds got Luke Shen. Loved having him back in Toronto for a split second. Um, I'm jealous that the Canucks have Dakota Joshua. It's upsetting. I'm going to check in with the chat here. Uh, from Gabriel Wyant, Wyand, uh, are we hoping the Canucks can win it for Mats? You mean, you mean Canuck legend Matt Sundin? Yes, absolutely. Listen, I've got um, I've got Justin Fisher and I got Mad Dog behind the scenes on this, and I can tell you, Justin is a big Sundin Canucks guy. Why? Because Justin likes to likes to stir it up. That's right, big Sundin Canucks guy. What's that, Justin? Say it one more time. He's saying he's talking to me. Oh, what a save! Thatcher Demko, what a save! Oh my God! First off, blown away that Nashville got a chance like that this early. Second, wow. Wasn't he hurt? Isn't he supposed to be hurt? Damn. Damn, what a save. I can't wait till they show the replay on that. Oh, big hit. Tyler Myers, enormous. Every time he steps on the ice. Gigantic tower, man. Does he get turnstile? Doesn't matter. Big. Here we go. Okay, so we're waiting for a whistle here. I got it. I got to see this replay. That was a crazy save. Man, when your goalie does that, even in like house league or men's league, you're like... I'm going to go through a wall for this guy. I'm just watching the screen over the camera, by the way. It looks like I'm looking over you, but I'm just, you know, I've got a gigantic big screen TV connected behind you. Only the best for Mr. Wild, you know, my billionaire TV. Wow, man, I can't get over that save. That was great. So first line for the Canucks out, Suter, Miller with a big hit like that. I hope I'm not wrecking this for anybody, by the way. I'm, uh, it's 1623 on my clock. If you're trying to, I'm using the, I'm at work and I'm using the Sportsnet app. So it might be a little behind the main feed, um, but we don't have cable here at work because we live in the new world. Hey, did I just saw, for any of you um, like OGs of the SDP, I'm um, seeing some Panago ads there. Really like them to, you know, sign up. Um Okay, we haven't had a whistle in a long time here, so it'd be real nice to get one so we can have a look at that play again. You know, oh, here we go. Okay. They're going to show us. They're going to show us. Thatcher Demko drinking water, being amazing. Look at this. Like, that is a cr that's the save of the playoffs already. Like, of all, I mean, I know we're like six games in, but seriously, Bovillier gets robbed. Wow. And it was a great setup too. Um, Demko's career playoff career is a 2-1 and 0 with a 0 6 4 goals against average. I'm looking that up. There's Yeah, uh, Justin saying he's hoping his groin is okay after that. Me too, because I want to watch this goalie play. Um that is bizarre. I don't know if that I got that right. Oh, delayed penalty on Nashville here. This is the so this is gonna be interesting. I'm excited to see a little special teams because Vancouver is first off, they don't even they haven't even registered a shot, and it still feels like they're the better team in this game. Uh, given that it's only five minutes in. The second thing is that um I'm excited to see like Vancouver's got these great fast players. Yeah, that's that's not a see this this penalty is not a penalty two games from now. That's not no, that's not no. 
Um, okay, they did register a shot. I'm excited to see what um, the um, what the Nashville Predators can do about this because their strength is defense, and and obviously Vancouver scores a pile. I'm excited to see this. I know it sounds kind of nerdy, but you get a little excited sometimes about PK and PP. You know what I'm saying? Uh, let's go into the chat here. Look at this. Hey, man, I just want to say everybody that is here, thank you so much for, for being here. I, I really appreciate it. I'm kind of learning how to do this on the fly. Oh, Garland in the corner. By the way, C Connor Garland, I think earlier this year, was trying to find a, a way out of Vancouver to be traded. It's like Jake DeBrusque last year or the year before, whatever it was, when he had requested a trade. His agent was out there trying to make a trade. And nobody wanted him because it was three million bucks. And now he is like the most, and he always, like Vancouver fans always loved him, but like, he's been amazing. And oh, here we go. Besser. Besser. Oh, just misses the net. Sorry, I'll, I'll try to get a little bit further away from the microphone when I do that. Oh, here we go. Besser again. Yeah. Okay. I, I love what the Canucks are doing. Great shots from the point. And if UC ever gives up a rebound, eventually he will. Um, that's It's going to be real juicy for Patterson in there. See? It's, they're going high. Boom. Big shots. Love seeing a slap shot in this day and age, don't you? You never see them. And Patterson right in front of the net. Nobody on him. That's perfect. That's what you want to do. Not, not uh, if, listen, if I'm uh, the Predators, the enemy, I'm not liking this. So let's see. Uh, so Lindholm, the Lindholm story is interesting too. So I was talking about Connor Garland, you know, trying to get a trade out. And, and I think it was just because of his role on the team. And then of course they find him a role and he's been amazing. Lindholm, they trade for, they give up a King's ransom and rightfully so the team deserved it. And, uh, doesn't play great. And then CJ reports that right before the trade deadline, they might have traded him and nobody wanted it. I think that's crazy. Oh, but I respect this about the Canucks. If you trade for a guy early enough and you go, you know what? Not working out here. Let's get somebody else. If you're going to make a mistake, make it quickly. You know, I, I like, I believe that if you're, if you're going to screw up and you will, you might as well figure it out very quickly and correct the mistake. Now, I hope Lindholm is the player, I think he was battling some injuries. I hope he's the player that we saw at his best in Calgary because what a weapon he'll be, especially if the Canucks make a deep run here. And I'm, are there Nashville Predators fans in the chat, by the way? Preds fans who are just hating me right now? Drinking the Haterade? Uh, as a, from Ubaldo Alvarez, as a Kings fan, I love that the Canucks have never recovered from 2011 until now. <laughs> It's kind of true. It's been a rough, uh, been a rough go for him. Okay, there's there's my boy Bluger. I want to look at um, I want to look at the lines here because they they updated them. What I'm curious about for this series is like obviously you know your stars are going to show up for the Canucks, or at least you think you, they are. JT Miller seems to be a warrior no matter what, but um. You know, I know Gus Nyquist had a crazy year for Nashville, but and and so did Ryan O'Reilly, like really, really good. But like, is that going to translate in the playoffs? Like one of the things that the Leafs have, and I can always bring it back to the Leafs because, you know, it's always about them, is like stars have a hard time scoring in the playoffs. So is it going to be Nashville with their, you know, their all-depth team? Or is it going to be the big stars showing up? And look at this fight. Man, JT Miller's just a, he's a monster this year. It's crazy because he it, it felt like like he was this close to getting traded too. It's fun to watch. If only the Leafs could play this way. Pew Suter, deep Soros, drowning your Soros. No goals, no goals with Soros. There are some Nashville fans in the chat. I am an anti Adam fan. Well, pff, join the club. Uh, plenty of those. Let's go. If that play is not, if Lafferty, sorry, if Pedersen is not offside from that Lafferty break in, then th that's solid. But if, do you ever get the feeling like, so I'm watching the game now, Pedersen's got the puck at the point, 11:41, really good offensive zone pressure, although the Canucks are not getting a lot of shots. 
which is bizarre. I still feel like if you were to bring out one of those annoying graphs, um, they would probably tell you that five on five, the Canucks are dominating possession right now. And that's a good thing. Um, I forgot what I was going to say there. Just so enamored. What is it, Justin? Yeah. Okay. Um, so we'll get it. We'll get live clock. Justin's just reminded me to keep on top of the clock updates and it's actually perfect timing because we're about to hit 11 minutes right now. 11 minutes, 11 minutes left in the first. That's where we're at. I'm going to keep on it. We will get a live clock eventually throughout the series, but you know, we're figuring some stuff out. We're tuning and we'll get it happening. Well, Justin, Justin says it's because he's new and dumb, but I don't think so. I, I think we give Justin a little more credit than that. Very handsome. Um, that's never gone away. I just think we're, you know, we're learning stuff. The A team was, uh, last night with the Leafs, a hundred thousand people tuned into Steve's stream. And if you were one of them, I, I gotta say, thank you. Here's Tyler Myers, six foot six, gigantic. Uh, yeah, we'll get it. We'll get a time clock later on in the series. Here we go. So Justin is figuring that we're like probably 15 seconds ahead of cable. Um, anyway, I just want you to, I want you to know that I want you to be lined up with me. And since we got a face off, I will tell you that we're at 10 17. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm curious about, uh, where's your Canucks Jersey? You know what, Mark, uh, Mark just asked me. That's a good question. I don't have one. Uh, and I looked around the station and I don't think we have one. And I want the I want to get the '90s skate one, so I'm gonna to have to figure something out. Oh, good play, man! This is uh, uh, Phil Ronick, by the way, noted Alan Walsh client. What an ad he's been! I honestly, when they when they traded for him and they gave up a first round pick to the uh, Red Wings, I was like, man, like he's a great defenseman, but like, what are you doing? You're not a playoff team, and they are, they are, they weren't, but they are. Philip Forsberg, what a weapon. There, so it looks like Nashville's strategy, at least early on, is to go is to do the NHL like 13, like EA Sports NHL 13, where you just pass the puck across, hope that the goalie does the splits, and then you get an automatic goal. Although it's Thatcher Demko, so you probably won't have an automatic goal. Um, because I've seen at least when they have had the puck, which is not bring a lot, um, I'm seeing a lot of like we're going to try to, we're going to stretch Thatcher out. Um, from Doug, Super Chat. Adam, I just want to say I work at the Boston Pizza. You're coming to next Saturday. We're so excited to host you, Steve and Jesse. Yeah, I, honestly, I'm so excited to be there too. I think we're going to have a really, really good time. Like, um, uh, it, It's something that I'm hoping we get to do more and more of with Boston Pizza because um, this location is really cool. Um, the folks at Boston Pizza are great, um, like their head office and um, and the restaurant as well. Like, dealt with somebody named Tegan there and she was amazing. And, uh, we're going to do like a full show and then, um, we're going to do the live stream, but we're going to be doing videos down there. And Steve's going to go home and do the live stream from there. Cause we just want to make sure the internet was good. And we're going to send in video. Oh, here we go. Three on two Dakota Joshua. I'm telling you that Lynn home Joshua thing going on. There's this. Canucks are going to score here, but they actually have to shoot. Like we're 10 minutes in. That's right. What? Okay. Um, I know Dakota Joshua was drafted by the Leafs. Um, what round was he drafted in? I believe it was the fourth. And it's the fifth. Okay. Justin got me. It's the fifth. Justin knows his drafts. So he was drafted 128th overall in 2014. And by the way, the Leafs were not great at drafting up until that draft. That was the William Nylander draft. And um, before that, the year before that, I believe they selected Freddie Gauthier in the first round. And I remember TSN going, really? Seriously? Uh, he projects to be maximum at third line center. And they were wrong. He was a fourth line center. Still love Freddie the Goat, but not a first round pick. Uh, J Devils fans. Hey, I love you guys. I love your funny ad read. So I don't want to upgrade my VIP, but I feel bad not supporting you guys. So here I go. Well, hey, listen. It, it, the whole point of the um, the subscriptions are for people that if you don't want to hear ads or whatever, um, 
you know, that's totally understandable. Uh, and, and that's life. So we wanted to offer you something else. Uh, so that way that you'd have the option and obviously, you know, it's, uh, an ad supported world and, uh, it's extremely difficult to, um, to get those ads when we do get them. So, um, you know, it's just a, it's a tough economy right now. So, you know, we wanted to have that sort of, um, the subscription thing. So that way for people that wanted them and also kind of helps us out too. Good stabilizing. Oh, should I get a Messier, get a Louis Erickson jersey, get a Messier jersey? Uh, Tiger Williams jersey, a Flying V Canucks Tiger Williams jersey. Now there's a good one. The uh, the Cooperall jersey. Yes, I am so all about that. Thank you, chat. Love that. Um, I love Tiger Williams. Legend here in Toronto. Legend here in Vancouver. I wish... Like, there, I wish there was a thing that Pat Quinn, because to me, the best, the most iconic Leafs Canucks crossover is Pat Quinn. Pat Quinn was a legend here. He was a, le oh, Zadorov, love him. Punching faces, keep doing it. Um, like, total legend in Vancouver, unbelievable coach and uh, unbelievable uh, coach and player in Toronto. Be nice if you could do like a Pat Quinn thing, but he really just kind of chewed gum and wore a suit. So, yeah. Uh, DD Weiss clicked like click subscribe, man. Hey, Alexander Tepper. Thank you for becoming uh, a member of the VIP ad free tier. Love that. Uh, and Gabriel, why, uh, Gabriel Wyant. Thank you so much for, uh, for the donation, sir. Appreciate it. You can ask a question next time if you want to. Um, uh, Adam Baum says Brian Burke was a good crossover too. Yeah. The problem with the Brian Burke era in Toronto is there was so much promise and then so little like delivery. And I feel, I feel like I don't know what to make of those teams sometimes because first off, the goaltending was atrocious. It was so bad. Like it's so, it was, uh, you know, Paul Maurice under John Ferguson Jr. The goaltending was atrocious. And then though their answer to Andrew Raycroft, who actually, I think up until recently owned the Leafs single season wins record with like 37. So they, they didn't like Andrew Raycroft. So they're like, how about Vesa Toscala? Better yet, how about four years of it? Uh, and then, you know, with Berkey, it was like they tried to get Luongo, which would have been an iconic Vancouver-Toronto crossover. I think Nazem Kadri would have had to go the other way, though. Um, and uh, they never got that deal done. And I just feel like we never got to see, um, we never got to see the Berkey era play out the way it probably should have here, uh, and the way that it did in Vancouver. Like, Berkey set the Canucks up with those Sedin picks. Like, that is brilliant general managing and that should never be taken away from the man. Um, love seeing you. Uh, uh, oh, from Mukma Mukme. I don't even know how to pronounce your name. Love seeing you doing live games too. What is your favorite Ronnie James Dio song? Oh my God. Are we talking about Ronnie on his own or are we talking about heaven and hell when he took over for Ozzy and black Sabbath? If it's, um, if it's just Ronnie on its own, it's obviously Holy Diver. And the reason for that is A, the song rules. B, it's featured in a South Park uh, episode. I don't know if you guys remember this, but it's like a deep cut where uh, they're at a school dance and um, and they're like, and it's a bunch of grade fours. And then it's like, all right, welcome the band, Ronnie James Dio. And then they break into Holy Diver. And I always thought that was the funniest thing, but I might be the only one. Uh, Casey DeSmith jersey, Habs legend. <laughs> Canucks gradient jersey in a Naslin. That Canucks gradient jersey with the red? Man, I loved that version of the Canucks. Naslin, Morrison, Bertuzzi. That was a that was a great era. Uh, Matthias Olin. Like that. Wow. What a team. Um uh was that was Dan Cluche the goalie for them back then? Um, can anybody confirm that? Was it Dan Cluche? Because I remember for a while, and this is really uh, the, it would have been Justin, if you're looking it up, I'm looking like 2005, 2006, who was the main starting goaltender for the Canucks? Cause it couldn't have been Kluche, right? Um, by the way, the Canucks, like how are they getting outshot by Nashville? This is crazy. I know you guys are watching this game too. And I'm like, I'm uh, by the way, 652 left in the first on my clock. I'm watching on the sports net app. If anybody's wondering. Um, I remember early on in, in Google history, you used to be able to manipulate the drop down search bar based on how many times you search something. And I think Canucks fans played a prank where um, if you 
searched worst NHL goalie ever. Dan Cluche's name was the name that came up. Do you guys remember that? Is that? It was Dan Cluche. Alex Ald was the backup. Thank you, Justin. Wow. Okay, so I do have a good memory. I paid a lot of attention to the Canucks that era. That was such an exciting... Like, I would stay up and uh, after the Leafs game was over on Saturday night, I'd stay up and watch the Canucks. They were so, so good. I just remember wishing that... And listen, I, I incident aside, like Tyler or uh, Todd Bertuzzi was unbelievable. Like, he was crazy good. And uh, I, I remember wishing that, like, like that uh, the Leafs had a guy like that in the playoffs. And I was like 12. No, I wasn't 12 in 06. I was 18. Where, yeah, how old were you in 06, Justin? Yeah, that was, that was, that's when we graduated high school, 18. By the way, Justin and I used to play hockey together. You can't see or hear Justin, but he's producing tonight. And um, Justin was pretty good. Pretty damn good. And you know what, though? Gentleman on the ice, like Lady Bing candidate. One time, Justin accidentally elbowed me in the head uh, when we were playing each other. And um, my bottom lip started bleeding a little bit because I had nerdy braces on. And, uh, and I remember being like, oh. And I just heard Justin go, hey, man, I'm so sorry. You all right? He's <laughs> a good guy. He's a good man. That Justin Fisher. Um, yeah, I did trip Justin, too. He once had a breakaway, and I was like, no, I don't think so. So I tripped him. And there was no penalty shots in our league, so I just took a two-minute penalty. Um, Cole Herman, do you still have faith in your Leafs in six prediction? Yeah, man. Like, uh, by the way, Cole, thank you for the uh, the super chat. Uh, yeah, I do. I I think I think I do. Um, I think one game is one game. But man, I was pissed last night. Actually, my wife Natalie was so mad at the end of the second period with the you know the three goals Boston scored that she just like went to bed for about ten minutes of the third period. She was gone. She's like, I just can't. And then she calmed down. She's like, Okay, I'm ready. And then came back, and they promptly just, I mean. It just wasn't great. It just wasn't a great game. No more penalties. Stop the penalties. Like, look at the Canucks. They've gotten all the way into this, this first period. The Leafs would have taken like 10 penalties right now. The Canucks have been clean. There's been the one Colton Sissons, um, the one Colton Sissons penalty. And the Canucks, I think, had a pretty good power play. They didn't get enough. Again, they're not converting on the shots. Um, there's a lot of skating around. There's a lot of puck movement. It looks great. We got to get some shots on UC. It's UC Saros. You got to get into him early, and it's too late to get into him early. It's 4.05 left if you're uh, trying to align your clock. So um, you got to, this is a guy like, I, I feel like to win against UC Saros most nights, you got to have like 35 shots, especially in the playoffs. This guy's dialed. He's a legend. He's got to be, what, him, Hellebuck, Vasilevsky, like top three goalie in the NHL right now, depending upon the day. Like, Guys, look at this. Look at these. Are you? You're, yeah. Okay. So we missed that one, but like UC's making some good saves. Not like Thatcher, though. <whistles> that save earlier was amazing. Um, oh, shout out to the Leaf fans, by the way, uh, in the chat who are going. Last night was horrible. It was horrible. And you know what? If you if you're a Leaf hater in the chat, this is the kind of game that last night was a ga kind of game you laugh at. Like you must just love seeing Leaf fans torture ourselves watching bullshit like that. It was not a good game. But I feel like they've got the talent that they'll be fine. I, I didn't think Boston was spectacular either. I think the Leafs just gave it to them. Um, I, I'm looking at Vancouver tonight. They move so well. Like they're I, what I I love a Vancouver breakout. Stupid, right? Nerdy. But like, watch, especially if you're a Leaf fan and you're not watching enough West Coast games, watch Vancouver just leave and and go into the neutral zone with the puck. Watch how fast they freaking do it. Leafs need to learn how to do that. Uh, we got a, a nice little poll up. Uh, who scores first, Canucks or Preds? Obviously Canucks. Um, and you know what? If things go right, it should be Canucks only. Uh, shout out to Julian McKenzie joining the chat. Love that. Uh, uh, Nakathy Weatherman, Bruins fan here. Love watching you guys cry. I don't blame you. We cry hard. We cry hard in Toronto. Um, uh, Drewby, thanks, Adam, for the stream. If you could make a Star Wars game, what timeline and character would you base it on? Now that we're in commercials, I can feel like I can answer this properly. Um, I would go, I'm dying for a Clone Wars from the point of view of a clone, uh, but dark and gritty, and it gets progressively worse. And when it ends, you don't feel good. 
Like you're not the good guy. You've done some bad stuff. Like aggressive. You know what I mean? Because it's a it's a it's a descent into empire. It's not good. So like yeah, I, I want something like that. Don't give me this where like Iden Versio where oh she's bad, but then she turns good because she sees the light. No, I don't want a redemption arc. I want this to go from good to brutal, and end on brutal. Oh the, wow, Fred score, Jason Zucker, damn. Great redirection in front of the net. Once we take a look at this, this is how you got to get goals on a, on on UC Saros. Is how you got to get goals on Thatcher Demko. Great faceoff win there. Just battling. Yossi, point, Zucker, and did anybody redirect that? I can't hear this TV, so it doesn't seem that way. No, Jankowski and Sissons didn't touch it, but they're running screen. Look at that Selly from Jason Zucker. Oh baby, he wanted that. That's a scream. Man, there's a guy who has been shifted around, like the way he was moved out at um, Minnesota a couple years ago, and his wife was tweeting about how they kind of misled him. Was it Minnesota under Paul Fenton? And then he went to Pittsburgh and, and then Chicago, and he seems to have, you know, seems to be a, like at home in, in Nashville. It's nice to hear, or nice to see, because um, that's a good hockey player. Here we go. Suter. Ah, I didn't quite re redirect it. And look at that. Look at that. I don't know if any Lee fans are watching, but Carson Sosi pinched and somebody covered for him. Wow. 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 We could learn a little from that. Imagine pinching and somebody covering for you. I can't imagine it. Couldn't be me. Lee fan. And is that icing? It is. The most exciting play in hockey. Icing. Let's have a look at the chat here. Um... Alexander Teppert, Adam, I need my nailing the Apex content ASAP. That's coming. Uh, Tim and I recorded it uh, a couple hours ago. It's been a long day. Did uh, the STP earlier, uh, and then did nailing the Apex, doing this, having some fun. This is actually the thing. I'm don't tell anybody. It's the thing I'm looking forward to the most. Uh, the nailing the Apex Formula One show. You should check it out if you haven't. Great Chinese Grand Prix last night. Um, I watched it this morning because I'm a human. Because uh, it was at 3 a.m. But man, it was good. And uh, lots to talk about on the show. Uh, Zuck. Sorry, what's that, Justin? Justin's talking to me. Nailing the Apex will be up in 20 minutes, according to Justin Fisher. We got two minutes and 36 seconds left in the first, if you're trying to get in there. Jason Zucker, best player in the league. I am coping unbearably hard from uh, Steeson Schiller. That's okay. Cope away. Luke McGrath, do you think Bad Batch from Star Wars is going to end on a really sad note? You know what, Luke? Um, I hope so. The, the problem I have with that show, and I like Bad Batch a lot. I watch every episode. Sometimes they don't get the stakes right. Great drama is like, what's at stake? We're watching great drama right now. Nashville, team that nobody expected to be this good, is very, very good. But they're the enemy. Don't forget it. Vancouver, great team. Nobody expected them to be this good. And they are like an excellent team. And that what's at stake here is it's like somebody's season's going to end in heartbreak. And especially for the Canucks who won the division, um, you're expecting them to come in and win without a lot of playoff experience on the roster, right? Um, yeah, what Bad Batch doesn't get sometimes is, oh, we got to fight here. We need, more, we need better stakes. I need more at stake. I need to care a little bit more. But yes, do I think... Uh, it's going to end on a sad note. It's got to a little bit. Remember, descent into madness. Uh, Lebutsky said, man, what is it with teams refusing to score when you're streaming? Uh, I'll tell you. Um, it's that I'm going against the Nashville Predators. And they don't, they're low event hockey. Did I pick the most boring series? I don't think so, because I think the Canucks will make it very interesting and win. Uh, because we're all Canucks fans here tonight. But... Uh, I do think that, um, uh, I do think that, um, the Nashville Predators are a Barry Trotz team. And if Barry Trotz could win every game one, nothing like they are right now, that's what he'll do. And you watch, I think they're going to go like, we'll see what they do in the second period. But to me, if I am the Nashville Predators, one goal might be enough. And I know that sounds ridiculous, but what are the chances Nashville's going to cheat and score goals? Don't think so. They're not cheating offense. So if they go like one, three, one, 
and just try to gum up the neutral zone for the entire second and third period? Is it going to be boring and suck? Absolutely. Does it kind of blow that Vancouver playing their first game, home playoff game in front of fans in like 10 years, didn't get the first goal? Absolutely. We got to get a goal. But once that goal goes in, if Nashville allows a goal, guys, before, if they if they score, it's like 3 nothing. Yeah, it's a different game. But it, as soon as Vancouver ties this up, and I think they will, uh, probably early in the second period, that's my bet, um, that Canucks crowd is going to go nuts. And that'll be like a lightning bolt to the Vancouver bench. So Nashville cannot allow that to happen. Um, Chris Keller. Hey, Adam, since you and Steve are each streaming a series, which one should Jesse stream? So Jesse's doing something really cool. He's doing um, his uh, uh, his stream where he does like all the NHL. Um, he, he does. He plays NHL 24 and tries to build a team that wins the Stanley Cup. And he has won precisely zero cups. And he's done like nine seasons of this. Um, so I love to make fun of him. Love to make fun of him. Will there be a penalty in the first period? Well, there was a penalty in the first period, SDPN had been. It was Colton Sissons for cross-checking. And by the way, and I think Canucks fans, you can probably admit this too, that's not a penalty later in the playoffs. That's an early playoffs penalty. Mm, if this is the third round, no. Okay, what's going on here? Are they sending people off? Did they change? And Jesse is streaming every night. He's also here. Hi, Jesse. I'm so glad that actually uh, um, Jesse's doing the lead in. It's nice to have a little. Uh, it's nice to have a little content to listen to. I was pretty nervous um, getting ready for the stream tonight, and uh, it was just <laughs> fun watching him make trades. I'm so mad about his Max Domi trade, though. Don't even talk to me about it. Here we go. Ooh. Oh, okay. Good break up there, Patterson. Okay, so there's 126 left. Gain the zone. Grab possession. Even though your two top lines are out there, Canucks have got to, they got to have a good last minute here. You got to give, you got to have something that makes you feel good going into the dressing room. They got to feel good about their play so far, but only three shots with the way that they have played is ridiculous. Here we go. See, they're, they're getting the chances, but they're not, they're not getting it on the net. And this is such a prime Nashville thing. Oh, we're going to hold you to three effing shots in the first period. Man. You know, to quote you two, I desire more shots from the Vancouver Canucks. I'm going to have to pull up my old U2 greatest hits. Yes, I did own that, by the way. I loved U2, but I don't love them now. Oh, oh, good play. See, we have a shot. And look at that. It leads to a scoring chance. Had somebody been in the right opportunity or right spot, we're talking rebound and goal. Man, you you sometimes when you don't watch all the time or your team doesn't have players that are that big, you forget how big Zadorov is. You do. He's enormous. Oh, big, uh, big hit there on Joshua. Neutral zone, 12 seconds. We got 10 seconds to go. We got eight seconds to go. We're messing around. Colton Sissons just playing dead puck. Everybody's hitting each other. And first period over. Uh, well, I see, here's what I love about Canucks fans. Some of them are getting up and still doing the towel thing, even though they're down one, nothing. I like that. Um, puck guy is the SDPN going to be at the draft in Vegas this year. I don't know. I, I think, um, because it's decentralized, I'm not sure how that's all going to look. I actually have to talk to CJ about that because I don't know how that's all going to look since nobody is going to be there. Doesn't make sense. I don't know. I, you know, and, and the thing is too, like our live stream for the draft last year with Steve and Jesse was a lot of fun and a lot of you tuned in, which is awesome. And, uh, I gotta be honest. Uh, it's kind of fun doing that from the comfort of your own home, unless you're going out to party. Like, listen, if Julian McKenzie is going to be there, then I'm going to want to be in Vegas because Julian is awesome to party with. Um, okay. There was somebody that wants a, uh, a history corner in the first period. If you want me to do a history corner, guys, you gotta you gotta send a question. You gotta send in a question. Um, I can do a history corner. Yeah, you gotta smash the like button. Like, we're at, what what are we at here? Seventy two likes, unacceptable. We need to. We I need at least. Oh no, no. Okay, I just refreshed it. No, we're not. We're at three hundred forty seven. Well, that's really cool. Um, Adam, can we get a quick history corner hit here during intermission? No specific topic. Okay, so I need a specific topic. Give me something. Um, don't, okay. And Kevin Murphy, why did the Roman empire fall apart? There's like 40 billion books written on that. There's so many, 
so many things. Uh, Battle of Toledo. I don't know the Battle of Toledo. Two one one. What's that, Jesse? Battle of the Bulge. Adam and his hate for Nashville is so entertaining. Yeah, because Nashville's so hateable, right? Just, just brutal. Okay, here's what I'm going to tell you. We're going to take a quick breather. I'm going to run a. Uh, we're going to run an STP clip. Justin, what are we talking about? STP. What are we doing? Okay, Oilers Clint King season preview. I'm going to play a little bit of that, and I'm going to have a look at some of keep the uh, keep the history corner topics coming, and then as soon as that uh, is done, I'm just taking a breather, going to the bathroom. I honestly have to pee. Uh, I'll come back with a uh, history corner. All right, first intermission history corner. Thank you for hanging out on this Canucks live stream. It's really cool to have you all here. I'm really enjoying this. All right, let's play that clip, Justin. Did LA get better? I don't think anybody thinks LA got better. They had to fire their coach. Pierre-Luc Dubois didn't show up the way they wanted him to. Are they honest, better? I honestly do. Um, they were really good basically post-All-Star break. They settled into their new coach, which they very did not do uh, right away. And they have an identity, which yep. is it's going to stink to play against us. It's going to be not fun. For reference, uh, Todd McClellan was 23-15-10. Jim Hiller, 12 12- uh, 21, 12, and 1. Ooh. Really good. Jim Hiller, former Leafs assistant coach. We saw him in Nashville at the draft. You don't remember this no. because some guy walks up to us. He's like, hey, listen to your show. And we're like, oh, hey, what's up? He's like, yeah, that's my dad. And he points behind him to Jim Hiller. And we oh, were like, cool. oh, so what? Jim cool. Hiller's kid could be listening to this right now. He could be. Wow. And, uh, you know what? I changed my pick. The Kings are, are going to win. The Kings in two. Kings in one. So, so what do you what do you like about the Kings? You were talking about how they got better. Well, I mean, this year to last year, you think so? I do. Um, they became a better playoff team. Okay. Uh, I think um, they're getting better goaltending at a Cam Talbot as well. Um, you need a. Uh, you you want good goaltending? You get a good coach. You want a good coach? You get good goaltending and all that stuff. Uh, this is about to become a Jim Hiller show very fast. Um, they are built to not necessarily be the best team in, in these playoffs. I have a hard time envisioning them winning the Stanley Cup this year. You never know. But they've given themselves the best chance possible to beat the Oilers by playing the way they play, by making everyone's night miserable. Pierre-Luc Dubois to me is such an X factor here. Cause they essentially haven't had him all year. Yes. That's Bobby right. McMahon had more goals than him. Yep. I think, um, which is insane. He signed an eight and a half million dollar extension, but if he can just be an asshole, just be, don't even, you don't have to score. Mm -hmm. You don't got to set up plays. You just be an asshole. Like there's a reality here where you can salvage this season with him. He doesn't play like an eight and a half million dollar player. He hasn't played like an eight and a half million dollar player all year, but if he plays like an elite bottom sixer, add Kopitar and Dano to that, mm -hmm. that's going to be a problem. Okay. Okay. We haven't even mentioned Connor McDavid's name yet. Uh, no, we haven't because and, that seems like the obvious thing, right? Well, like, <laughs> you know, is this us galaxy braining everything into talking ourselves into the idea that yes. McDavid could be shut down? Yes. And the thing is, what my my rebuttal to what you all, everything you just said is the Oilers have already figured this out. They've already played most of these guys. They've already done this. And I feel like we got to kind of maybe take that into consideration. You know, it's it's sort of an important point. It's, it's going to be a really interesting series if it's just close. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. the, the Oilers play these games that get far away from their opponent and far away from them. Um, they're great at erasing deficits and they're not very good at holding leads. If these games are consistently, you know, between one and two goals apart, I think the Kings give themselves a pretty good chance here. Jesse, what do you think? That's, I think like you nailed how the Oilers play hockey. Like they need to be front runners in this thing. They need yeah. to get out ahead. And like, I'm having a such a tough time picking against the Kings because I love their four group so much. Anze Kopitar, Philip Deneau, right down the middle. Like, and whether you get. Well, and Alex Lafreniere. 
The yes. better Lafreniere. That's but Laferriere. Lef- I know. I'm kidding. <laughs> I know it's Lafreniere. Um, I love Kevin Fiala and the goal scoring he brings. Quinton Byfield has emerged as a legitimate star in this league. Adrian Kempe, one of the most underrated players in the league. Victor Arvidsson's there again. Like they have such dynamic players in their four group. Like I, I think they can go up against Edmonton. But dude, I, re- read that stupid fourth line. Byfield, Dubois, Turcotte. Get lost. That's crazy. Get lost. Now, I don't know if they're going to run that out as the fourth line come game one. Like, maybe we see uh, shuffling on the deck as opposed to what Daily Faceoff has. But, yeah. like, they're, they've are they everywhere in their four group, they have good players. I, I don't know how, the, how you weather the storm of the Oilers' top six. But King's bottom six is better. If Th- anybody's going to shut down there. dry side on McDavid, it's going to be Philip Deneau. We have, yeah. A, yeah, we already said that last year, you know. Yeah, <laughs> and they got they got close. Like, let's not act like both times weren't close series. Is okay. Now pretend we're talking about the Leafs instead of the Kings. Don't we sound like babies? <laughs> you know what I mean, right? Um, like, yeah, it was close. They keep losing in Game Seven. Yeah, close. the the goaltending thing. I thought goaltending would be such much more of a bigger issue, and it hasn't. Like down the stretch, Cam Talbot's been great. Like mm-hmm. it's been fine. Why the hell did the Oilers start Stuart Skinner in the final game of the season? They he um he pulled back on his mistake by pulling him after the first period. Yeah, and we everybody realized like, oh, you shouldn't start Stuart Skinner here, and and Pickard went in right after the first period. There was it was questionable. There's also nothing on the line for either team. Yeah, Knobloch needed to have a Knobloch on his head for hey, that. Hey, 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 hey. The also the interesting uh the the emergence of. Jordan Spence over Brant Clark, who everybody kind of penciled mm-hmm. in to be the guy that replaced Sean Dursey. You know, when you get a guy, I think Jordan Spence is what a fourth round pick, third round pick. Uh, yeah. Fourth, uh, 95th overall, fourth round, second pick in the fourth round Jeez. in 2019. What a great pickup. He's been, it gives them a lot of depth. They draft so well. They do draft really, really well. So, uh, we spent a lot of time on the Kings, and I feel like yeah. Uh, oh, at least well, the Oilers are so gonna, obvious. But like, okay, tell me about what's obvious. Then. They score a million goals, and they can't defend. <laughs> but their million goal scoring is so good that it doesn't matter that they can't defend. I think come playoff time, it, the amount you trust a player like Darnell Nurse to have a great moment uh, throughout the entire series and not have a bad moment and screw up a game is it come the playoff time, like you're a little shaky on whether or not he can do that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he can, Evan Bouchard's got to dial it in too. Evan Bouchard, I think, is a Norse Trophy candidate and nothing. don't ever say anything bad about Evan Bouchard. He's perfect. <laughs> Terrible defender. He's perfect. He is a bad defender. Now, Evan Bouchard, like, he's going to score a bunch. He's going to put up a lot of apples, a couple of goals, and he's going to be fine. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I worry about the other pieces of their defense. I am curious to see the deployment of Darnell Nurse because this guy has been a, uh, a real topic of conversation. Obviously, the expectations, uh, I think injuries have held him up, uh, but he's not the defenseman he once was, especially when he signed that extension. The money, as we've seen in Toronto does matter when you're talking about how to rate a player. And there are people saying, well, he's kind of like a second or a third pair guy. And that's not how he's been deployed. And so I'm wondering what kind of factor that's going to be for Knobloch in the series. It seems like a ridiculous thing to call out. But actually, he's supposed to be one of the core pieces of the defense. Just get it on the forward stick. Do whatever you got to do. Turn it around and go. Turn it around and go. Turn it around and go. If, If you get hemmed in, they're boned. They're like, I, I so consistently watch their games and you're like, oh, this team's unbeatable. And then the other team just gets set and you're like, oh, they're actually friggin' awful. The other it's, one I want to. They're, they're a completely Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde team that could easily win the cup. I'm I'm shocked every time. If I don't know if they're going to do this game one, but every time it's Nurse Cece. I'm like, wow. Oh, boy. That's a decision. Yeah, it sure is a call. (laughs) Scored against the Sharks. How dare you? Um, (laughs) They scored nine goals. I know. (laughs) Two years ago, Evander Kane had 17 points, 13 of them goals uh, in 15 games with the Oilers. And I believe he and Leon Dreisaitl, if I'm not mistaken, were like tied for goals lead going into the finals. And they didn't even make it past the third round, which is amazing. Yeah. Uh, last year, you know, five points in 12 games. Evander Kane, what, how important is it to get the best out of this guy in this series? I mean, this series could come down to which player who is paid to be a goal-scoring jerk uh, actually shows up. Is Dubois, it Dubois or Kane. Or Kane. Um, like, Kane was a ridiculous factor. A ridiculous 
ridiculous factor. And now he's on the third line getting screamed at by Corey Perry. I, I can't believe the downfall of, of this guy. You know, the, the, the problems uh, with him were always like off ice or in the locker room or, or whatever. Uh, I didn't really think this whole hockey playing thing was, a, was a big issue for him. So maybe he's hurt. Maybe he's saving it for the playoffs. If he finds another gear, I don't really see how the Kings can win. Chris Johnston did an article where he interviewed a bunch of anonymous executives around the league. Some okay. GM, some scouts, some some other guys who work in pro hockey. This is what they said about the, the Edmonton Oilers defense and how to exploit it and how to neutralize McDavid. The easiest way to shut... This was anonymous executive two. The easiest way to shut down the Oilers is preventing McDavid from, from picking up steam in the neutral zone. The way you prevent McDavid from picking up steam in, is to mess with the way they do their breakouts and defensive zone exits. That starts with their retrievals. Ekholm, good fucking player, but he can't make plays on his backhand, and Bouchard won't retrieve the puck in the corners. He definitely will not. We had a good meeting about that before we played Edmonton. We executed that strategy perfectly, and we just abused them. If I'm going up against the Oilers and I identify that vulnerability, that is what I'm going after. I think that who the thing- hell is this executive? <laughs> yeah. That is a quote. The Kings, Woo! man. The Kings. I gotta say. They have the talent to do it up front. For, it, that means four check, four check. Dude, forget this series. CJ's so good at his job. I know he's, he's oh, so yeah, good at good. his job. Uh, That's all right, all right, a let's, crazy quote. Let's get to the uh, let's get to the picks. What do we think? Oh, boy, I think it's gonna be really fun. I think we deserve a seven game series. I think every Oilers series we deserve seven. We deserve to see as much of Connor McDavid as possible. Uh, unfortunately, I don't think we're gonna get that Oilers in six. Jesse Blake. Uh, Good luck executing this strategy, Oilers in six. I will say Oilers in six as well. All right, we're back. Um, I want to show you this. This is from producer Nick, who does the the CJ show. I just want you to hear this because he's actually at the game with Sportsnet tonight. He said fans are just going nuts. This is the this is the start. And they're playing you too. So listen, I, I got to be careful about the, uh, the the rights there, but they're playing a U2 song to kick it off. I think that's hilarious. Also, the fans are just going bonkers. And I really hope we get a goal early to get the fans back into it. Such a dagger when, you know, you've got a team that hasn't been in the playoffs much. I remember 16-17 uh, against the Capitals when the Leafs were like, I think they won game three and went up 2-1. And just that feeling, I think it was, was it Bozak in overtime? Steve would remember. Um, and like that was their first home playoff game in six or seven years. And then before that, it was like 10 years. So exciting. So much fun. So it's great to see this back for you Canuck fans. Now, a, a lot of people were asking for a history corner. And I admit, this one's, this one's not going to be my greatest. But a lot of people requested, hey, Vancouver, give me the history of George Vancouver. Believe it or not, because I'm such a dweeb, I wrote a, a history paper on him in like grade six or seven. Um, George Vancouver was a guy, uh, and he was like a an explorer with the British Navy. So this is my history corner. You ready? Um, this guy uh, does. He sailed basically back then. You know where England is on, on a map. He he sails out of that, and then he goes south all the way down to the tip of South America, which is brutal water to sail through, and then sails all the way up. Um, and he was, uh, I think he was sailing the ship called uh, Discovery. Um, and he was, um, he, he, he worked a little bit with the Spanish Empire, which is kind of crazy, but then he worked a lot with the British Empire. And he entered in 1792, the Strait of Juan de Fuca which is hilarious uh, because that is currently between the, the strait between Vancouver Island and Washington state, Vancouver and Washington state, uh, or, or sorry, in, in Seattle, really close together. And I think it's funny that at one point it was called the Strait of Juan de Fuca because the Vancouver and the Washington state era area were at one point claimed by the Spanish. So everybody in Vancouver, you could be speaking Espanol, but you're not because the Spanish really didn't get in there and uh, the British did. And I just think it's kind of a it's a it's a neat story. Obviously, I need to do a little bit more digging. I was trying to do as much digging as I could, um, but they basically like sailed and 
kind of gave each other the side eye and sort of shook hands and that was it. Um, but this guy, um, George Vancouver, uh, was really interesting because he went to places like all over the West coast. So he was up and down California and he was, he went to Hawaii and like this, is you got to think like this is age of sale. He would have been away from home for years and it's like, okay, we want to turn around and go home. Okay. Well now we got to go all the way back down to the tip of South America. And then we got to all the way back up to North America and then we get across. It's brutal. It's a, it's just a brutal life on a boat. But you know, that's uh that's how the country was discovered. Oh, there's a Juan de Fuca Provincial Park. Get out of here. I did not know that. How about that? Well, you learn something new every day. Uh, I did not know that at all. Uh, anyway, uh, that's my that's my very quick history corner. I will do more of them if you guys want to. Um, but by the way, I do want to do a quick shout out while we're still in intermission. TJ. Uh, thank you for gifting five SDPN memberships to people. I'm so excited for you guys all to try it out because, um, um, the, the VIP episodes are fun because we get to kind of get outside of hockey. What we used to do, I know I've said this a lot, but we used to actually, um, uh, we used to just do first half hockey, second half, whatever the heck was going on. Uh, I remember we had like a whole segment on, uh, Bella Hadid looking at Air Jordans and how awkward she was. And Steve does a great impression of it. And, uh, you know, we just don't, we didn't get to do that as much anymore because people were like, where's the hockey? Stop talking about this stuff. So uh, anyway, uh, anyway, now, uh, now here we are. Now we are. Um, we got, uh, we got Emma Wells. They must have had all the scurvy. Yes, Emma, they did. Uh, anybody, any, if you ever see a movie where they glamorize on a, being life on a sailing ship, um, just remember that basically all of their teeth were falling out because they couldn't get enough vitamin C. Like, not a pleasant life. Nobody signed up to be a sailor. They actually, like, the Brits did this, the French did this, the Spanish did this, Portuguese did this, the Dutch did it, they all did it. Um, they would, like, kidnap people from their own streets and be like, okay, you're in the Army now, or you're in the Navy now. Oh, you don't have a job? Well, you're in the Navy now. Goodbye to your family. You'll never come home. Uh, happened all the time. Um, yeah, Warrior Womp, dude bros can't handle the history. The history is serious. I'm going to do a little more research on George Vancouver. We're going to update our, our George Vancouver history corner as, uh, as the series goes on. I think we're all going to be George Vancouver um, uh, uh, like historians when this is all done. We got uh, the second period starting off here. By the way, I, I, uh, I'm using the Sportsnet stream. So if you're using the Sportsnet app, that's the one I'm using. Um, I will update you with the time throughout. And as the series goes on, we'll actually add a clock. But here we go. JT Miller loses the face-off draw. And uh, I'm actually, honestly, if you, I'm not sure if you watched the first period with us here. I'm really surprised the Canucks didn't score, but they got to put more shots on the net. Um, kind of weird that Nashville was able to hold them, although I bet the scoring chances were, oh, good, good couple chances for Nashville to start. Um, I think the scoring chances for Nashville were limited, uh, but they were able to really limit the Canucks Oh, here we go. Shot. Besser had three defensemen on him there and still was able to get the puck out. That was cool. Dakota Joshua. Kind of wish the Leafs had hung on, hung on to him. Although, what do you really know about a fifth round pick in 2014? Is he the best one from that draft? Oh, what a goal! Oh, baby. You see Sorrow saw it, had it, doesn't matter. In. Wow. See, this is the thing. What did I tell you? Early in the second period, early in the second period, the Canucks needed to score. I said it was going to happen, and it freaking happened, and it's freaking Lindholm. They tr they traded for him, and then they tried to trade him, and he scores. Look at that. Nice shot. Soros saw that all the way. I know there was a defenseman in front of him. He saw it. That's a mistake. That's a sneaky little shot. Good for Lindholm. Oh, that's got to feel so good. Oh, baby. You know what? That almost didn't go in. Almost right off the uh, the thing. Man, Vancouver fans, congratulations. You have your first goal with fans in seats since 2015 against the Flames. Oh, that's a long time ago. Damn. That was great. That was fun. I can only imagine what it sounded like in there. I don't have the sound on my TV, but I imagine there was a pretty good pop. Look at them. Vancouver fans giving you the towel. Hell yeah. Lindholm's still on the ice. He's got to feel good about that. It's been a tough couple years for him. 40 goals and then goes into like 
purgatory with the Calgary Flames. Um, just a great shot. Knuckler, that's what caught him. It was a knuckler. Okay, well, that's that's just awesome. And good for the Canucks. That's exactly what they needed to do. All right, so it's 1852 on my clock if you're if you're trying to sync me up with the TV. <laughs> There's some really good shit stuff in there. Sean Poirier, Duchesne and his country guitar can suck it. <laughs> Why are we hating on Matt Duchesne other than the offside rule? The offside thing is all his fault. But still, we don't hate Duchesne, do we? I guess we hate him now because he's a pred. We got to hate him all. We're trying to hate one of the most likable teams in the NHL. It's not easy to do. I think that's offside. Yeah. Get out. You're going to have to clear it out. 1850 or 1825 here. Um, Steve said that he thinks Ryan McDonough is going to score this game um, just because silly people score. Like Lindholm scoring is objectively a little bit silly given how things have gone for him in Vancouver so far. Here we go. Oh, Sam Lafferty playing second line minutes. Man, the Leafs could have used him last night. I hate it. Not going to talk about it much. Or maybe I'm going to talk about it all the time. Maybe I'll become insufferable. That was a great trade by the Canucks. They've been making a lot of those lately. Oh, all right. I like what the Canucks are doing here. They're, they're forcing... They're actually getting it to the net because they were doing great breakouts. They were they were coming through the neutral zone swiftly, no problem, and uh, in the first period. But they were not getting the they're not getting the shots. Uh, hey, Kobe, thanks so much for gifting five memberships. Really appreciate it, buddy. And uh, yeah, TJ, you too, buddy. Uh, this is a question from TJ. Um, Adam Wild can recount the expedition of Vancouver off the dome, but simply. Cannot buy apples. He promised to buy. Loved history corner. Keep it up. TJ, you're right. I do owe Steve and Jesse some apples. Delicious. Crispy Ontario apples. We don't sell BC apples here. Do they make? They grow a lot of apples in BC. They grow a lot here. Um, yeah, I got to bring those in. Here's the thing, though. Do you, you Have you ever just handed somebody a bag of apples? It's a weird thing to do. Like, you can see, you can see donuts, but we're trying to be healthy because we're in our mid-30s now. Okay. So here's the interesting question. I thought that the Nashville Predators would come out, do a 1-3-1, clog the neutral zone, try to shut the Canucks down and win the game like one or two nothing. Like one nothing all the way to the last minute of the third and then score in an empty net. Now it's tied one all. The Canucks are objectively going to skate these guys into the earth. They're a fast moving team. And I don't even know if they've got the fastest skaters. It doesn't really matter. Uh, your, your passes are always going to skate faster than you are. And, uh, I, I mean, obviously they can, they can stop some goals. Uh, but I'm thinking that this is going to be a difficult, uh, task for Andrew Burnett. I'm a big, I wasn't a big Canucks believer, even as late as like November, but how can you deny it? They're amazing. And you can't blame me for not being the biggest supporter or booster before that. They had all the, the same guys and they weren't getting it done year after year, but Demko's healthy. Uh, Team team chemistry's there. Whatever was going on between Horvat and Miller is not anymore. Miller's looked like a brand new guy. He's crazy. Okay, here we go. Suter behind the net. Fighting off Novak. Yeah, Miller scores. Besser, come on. Woo! T oh, okay. Tyler Myers from the point. Oh, we got another redirect. Oh, Man, I thought Besser had that. Here we go. Oh, Miller. No. Uh, see, man, they are. The, this is a good four check. This is a great four check. They are keeping that puck away. Every time Nashville touches it, there's two forwards on them. Their, their, their thighs have got to be burning like crazy now. Got to get a, there's Mikheyev out there. Another great, uh, should I get a Mikheyev Canucks jersey? <laughs> Another great Leafs or a Lafferty Canucks jersey? For this, you can run down to the NHL store tomorrow and grab one. I want to get the, obviously, the classic 90s Canucks jersey, by the way. That's the best one that's ever. I don't even know why they don't switch that full time. This was a great, uh, a really great, uh, oh, suitor. Oh, my God. Yeah, that was awesome. Big hit by Miller. 
Uh, by the way, 16.10 on the clock for anybody that's uh, trying to sync up their feed with me here. That was a really great offensive zone push. That's exactly what the Canucks need to do. They'll win the series in like four games if they do that all the time. But it's only 1-1. One, one. Just don't know. Here we go. We got four guys going up the ice. Again, a beautiful Canucks breakout. The Leafs should take notes. Please start doing that. Oh, here we go. I thought McKay. Oh, whoo. If it was our lesser goalie, McKay would have scored there. But it's UC Saros. Who is the best Leaf and best Canuck to wear both jerseys? So we got Tiger Williams. We got Matt Sundin. We got McGillney. Felix Potvin. Oh, that would piss you off. Just Justin is feeding Felix Potvin. I loved McGillney. McGillney was a, it was both. Um, okay. I know people are saying, um, uh, I know people are saying Sundin was, but Sundin wasn't great with Vancouver. Like, let's be honest. That was a bit of a, a letdown. Oh, here we go. Garland. Oh, crumb across. Oh, oh. Mm. Dakota Joshua. See, this is why I'd be terrible at play by play. I always thought when I was growing up, like, that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to do play by play. Not for me. My brain doesn't work fast enough. Like, Steve's really good at it, too. And I'm, I'm hoping I get better, but uh, I, I mostly just react. <laughs> I go, oh, um, Connor Garland. Nice little uh, play to Lindholm there. I like that line a lot. They're like, tough and but they're good puck handlers and you're never going to get you're never they're never going to back off because somebody's coming at them with a big hit here we go big shot and deflected wide seeing some uh old school slap shots in this game besser had a couple early i think tyler johnson not tyler johnson tyler myers roman yossi just there it's nice some old school hacky here you go to call to Joshua. See, here you go. Roman Yossi. Wham. Oh. So Demko got a piece of it and then it hit the crossbar. Wow. Do I have a favorite slap shot? Like from a, is that a, Justin's asked me if I have a favorite slap shot. Are you talking about Justin? Like a particular person? Okay. The best slap shots ever. First off, you got to give a little shout out to the guy that created them. Bertie Jeffrey on. Boom, boom. Um, and if you watch him do it with a wooden stick in the fifties and black and white film, it's, it's kind of hilarious how far the game has come, but, uh, it's just a laser beam even back then. Um, who else had really great slap shots? OB slot. Oh, that's a big hit. That's almost a boarding maybe behind the net Tyler Myers, or is that, is it just big? Um, is Tyler Myers just gigantic and big and he makes you fall funny. Um, uh, okay, so we got uh, who else has got a great shot? Uh, Ovechkin, Stamkos. Um, yeah, like I think Ovechkin has, if you want to call Ovechkin shot a slap shot for most of the goals, which I think I would because the slap shot's got to go. He just stands there and goes like this. Everybody knows the shot's coming and he scored 800 something goals or whatever. I, I honestly, I think Ovechkin's got the best slap shot of all time. Stammer in his prime, <laughs> beautiful. Oh, Shea Weber. Good point. Shea Weber had a good one. Zidane Chara had a good one. Al McKinnis. Al McKinnis with wooden sticks in the All-Star game would hit over 100 miles an hour. Wooden sticks, guys. Al McKinnis, baby. I think Chris um, Chris Pronger had one. Prime PK Subban. Vincent, that's a good call. Um, who else? Justin saying Ally of Frady for the old school Leaf fans. Uh, and, and old Cap fans, too. If you're a Cap fan, you know Ally of Frady and his sweet skullet. He had no hair on the top of his head, but on the sides and at the back. That's where the party was. It was like a it was like a, a, a weird waterfall of hair. Crazy. And he also played without a helmet, too. So you really got to see his head. Um, weird story. I was on a bus with Ally of Frady and Darcy Tucker with Steve and with Jesse for like the 2017 playoffs against Boston. And Darcy Tucker is one of the most intense people I've ever met. Also one of the nicest. And Al was really nice too. Really, really nice guys. Um, I'm sorry, I know this is a Canuck stream, but I'm, I'm just telling you my experience. Nobody invited me on a, on a jet with uh, Marcus Naslin. Not yet. 
Um, Connor's apparently, or sorry, Arbor Jack guy did 107. <whistles> Damn. 107 at the Canadian Skills Comp? Damn, I'm going to have to look that up. That's crazy. Uh, Sergey Gonchar, Patterson did 105 miles an hour. Yeah, like, I, I think that's all cool. I, I'm going to give it, I'm going to give my crown to Al McInnes, and I'll tell you why. I would love to see what these guys could do with a wooden stick because if you missed with a wooden stick, it vibrated like a golf club. And that didn't feel good. Um, I remember because I'm old enough to have played with wooden sticks because my family were not buying me the aluminum sticks, which were heavy and brutal. Um, and uh, so I used to play with the the twenty dollar or the sorry the ten dollar Mario Lemieux special. It was just a twig. It was like a toothpick. Uh, here we go, Joshua. Oh, good save by UC. You got to get more shots at UC. Like Vancouver's come out really really well, but we are twelve twenty. Five right now, if you're syncing up your TV. Uh, nine shots at this point in the game is not enough to beat this team. And, oh, oh, you see what I mean? UC Soros is so good, you're going to have to get like 35, 40 shots on this guy to really get three, four goals past him. Especially in game one, you know he's dialed. And they've had some bummer first round opponents lately. And he, uh, you know, he's been hurt in the playoffs and they're like playing Connor Ingram. You remember that? Yeah. Oh, baby, I thought that was in. Man. See, the Canucks four-check pressure is, is awesome. Now we're up to 12 shots. A uh, bit of a giveaway there. How much do we love Qu uh, Quinn Hughes and uh, Phil Ronick? What a great defense pair. All offense. Who needs defense? You're never in your own zone anyway. Doesn't matter. Wonder what that, uh, that extension is going to look like. Anyway, back to the slap shot thing for a sec. Oh, is it? What is it? Even Andrew Burnett's mad. They're all yelling at the ref. What's the ref going to say? What happened here? I missed it. I was. Oh, Nashville thought they beat the icing. Did they beat the icing? Does it matter now? Oh, okay. So Justin's saying it looked like they beat the icing. I honestly missed it. I was looking at the screen and I missed it. That's a big deal, by the way. In the, in the regular season, you kind of bitch about it. In the in the uh, in the postseason, that's like life or death. And Nashville wins and dumps the puck. And they're if that was icing, they would beat that out too. But look at how the Canucks break out. I'm so blown away by this. I know they just gave that up, but it's like turn around, go. Nashville does not have time to set up defensively. Look into it, Toronto. Let's start moving the puck. Man, you can tell. Uh, uh, you can. You don't have to even look at the jersey numbers. You can tell when you see Zadorov or Myers. You can tell. They're just so big. Anyway, yeah, back to the slap shot thing for a second. Just want to throw this out there. Would love to see what Arbor Jackai, who did 107, or Pedersen that did 105, what do they do with a wooden stick? So until they show me that they can do that with a wooden stick, a real thick 90s wooden stick. Remember it had that like plastic coating on it that was like criss it looked like lattice work. You remember that stuff? If you can do it with one of those, then I'm impressed. If you do it with a carbon fiber carbon fiber shafts make everybody look like they're Sidney Crosby when they're shooting. Oh, we got a penalty and we were running into Demko. And I hope Demko's not hurt and he's not. Zadorov rubbing faces. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Jason Zucker knows exactly what Nikita Zadorov's hand smells like. That's always the worst thing, too, when you get the face rub. Even on, like, a cage, you can smell it later. It's like, Bleh. I guess that's the point. It's not supposed to be fun. Oh, they just showed the Lindholm goal again. Going to uh, commercial break. We're halfway through the second period. It's 10 minutes and 15 seconds if you're trying to... Uh, uh, when, uh, Adam Baum, when is this SDPN skills competition? You mean the sad competition? Um, none of us are great athletes. Jesse's a good athlete. Jesse was a really good athlete. He always gets embarrassed when I say this. I don't think he's on the, the stream anymore though. Uh, so I can talk about him. Jesse was a really, really good baseball player. I remember, so this is really stupid, but I used to, and I loved this. I used to play, um, trampoline dodgeball and one night we were short a player. And yes, trampoline dodgeball is exactly how it sounds. The floor is trampolines and the walls are trampolines. And yes, you can throw yourselves off them and you run into people. It's amazing. Anyway, 
I uh, we were short a man, and uh, Jesse and I were obviously working together at Kiss at the time. And I said, "Hey, man, do you want to come to Trampling Dodgeball?" And I figured, you know, he'd probably have a good throw. Jesse was like, I, I, I don't even know. It's like a Harlem Globetrotter, like just caught everything, was just rocking people. He's got a rocket arm. He was crushing people. And I was like, wow, all right. And I could never get him to come back because we would have won the championship every year if he was on the team. He was unbelievable. He was so good. Um, What do we got here? Um, Jesse played for the <laughs> – people said it was at Dalton Pompey that people said looked like Jesse. Um, Canadian Tire still says it was Dalton Pompey, yeah. Um, uh, Claude Giroux on the breakaway slap shot. Was that Claude? No, that was um, uh, Ridley Grigg. That was the that was a great slap. I would love to know what Ridley Grigg's slap shot looked like miles per hour wise against the Leafs on the open net. Was you know, listen, if you're below like 80 miles an hour, it's not even worth a cross check to the face, right? It's not even worth it. Um, Russell Macias, Adam, are you ready for a triple OT thriller? <sighs> okay. So, uh, I don't know how many of you guys are listening from the East or how many of you are listening or watching from the West or whatever it is, but so it's 1123 here and we're at midway through the second period, by the way, 1015 is where we're at. I'm on the sports net app. If you're, if you're trying to stream in, um, uh, yeah, if it goes to triple overtime, it's going to be like 3 a.m. <laughs> You know what? I hope the Canucks go on a deep run and we get one of those. I think that would be cool. That's a fun story. Five hours of just streaming. Let's go. I'm in. You'll just have to let me like grab a coffee every once in a while. Oh, it's Claude Giroux's shootout goal. That's the one I see. Okay. Did the mods miss my super chat? I might have missed it. I'm doing my best. Sometimes I miss stuff. If you super chatted... And I didn't see it. I apologize. I'm listening from Halifax. It's so late. Yeah, you are. Uh, how do you feel about Toffoli? Um, I feel like it's weird that he made such a mark on Vegas. What's that? Oh, you have it on screen? Okay. Um, I think it's weird that uh, Toffoli played like half a season in Vancouver and was like a cult hero and then they didn't keep him. I think it's ridiculous. Oh, what a goal! Wow, Ryan O'Reilly with a laser beam. Guys, Nashville's making this a game. And Ryan O'Reilly, we already know, playoff performer, he's great. It sucks that he's not in Toronto anymore. Look at this. What? Okay, so great for check. Yossi, Forsberg, Nyquist, Ryan O'Reilly back in the net. Great play. What a shot. Goalie saw it the whole way, couldn't stop it. Just handcuffed him. Oh, is there, oh, are we offside? Is there an offside call? Or was it goaltender interference? No, that can't be. That can't be goaltender interference, can it? Yeah, I, okay, they're lining, okay. Like, I don't blame them for looking at it, but come on now. Man, Vancouver had such a great start to this period, too. They deserve so much better than this. But I got to give Nashville credit. They've been opportunistic. That's what killed the Leafs, killed the Bruins, killed the Carolina Hurricanes against Florida last year on their run. They were so opportunistic. It's like if they got, a, if they got the right shot, it was in. Certain teams can't convert. Certain teams can. Canucks are going to have to learn in the playoffs. Um, and I'm sure they'll learn quickly. You got to convert. You just got it. It I, doesn't matter why the puck didn't go in. Did it go in? No? Okay, then that's not good enough. It's kind of how the playoffs are. They're a little bit unforgiving. Um, 9-10 left in the second period if you're trying to line up the clock. By the way, thank you for uh, everybody for being here. I I, uh, um, I just uh, just want to throw out, throw this out there. It's really cool that you're hanging out. Uh, it's late here in Toronto, but it's just uh, cool to have you guys along. I think this is going to be a really fun road because I'm going to be doing this um, – you know, I'm going to follow the Canucks run all the way. And then um, if the Canucks get eliminated, which they won't, um, I'm going to keep doing the West Coast games. So I would really love it if you guys um, really love it if you guys continue to hang out. This is fun. Are people saying that uh, are people saying that that was a that was interference? That was not interference. There's no way, guys. 
if that's interference, uh, we're gonna have really boring hockey games. It's gonna suck. Um, hey, so here's my here's my question. Given that we have watched one and a half periods so far, okay, uh, what's your prediction for the series? Now that you've seen the two teams face off in the playoffs, what's the prediction? Are we thinking? Are you are you Preds? Are you Canucks? Are you Game Four? Are you Game Five? Are you Game Six? Are you Game Seven? When's the series end? Or are you Game Three? Because you're that confident. What is it? What is it? By the way, I'm not going to lie. I'm looking at the uh, the Canadian Heritage Minutes going on in the uh, on the live feed, and I respect it. Historical Canada, love it. Um, here we go. We got Vancouver fan have Preds in seven. Really? Really? Uh, we got um, Darth Quater. That seems like my kind of guy. Canucks in seven, Preds in six, Canucks in six, five games, Nashville. Nashville in five would be, that would be a crazy ass story. You got to imagine like I, Nashville in four. Stop it. Stop it, Ronnie. No, you don't. You don't believe that. We're back, by the way. We back. Ryan O'Reilly. Great smile. Great guy. Still angry at him for not re-signing in Toronto, but I get it. Nashville's cool. It's really cool. It's a great place. 8.57 left in the second period. Yeah. Bowmanville supports you. Thank you, Tommy. Appreciate it. So a lot of people are saying that the Preds are clutch or that they're that you underestimate them at your own peril and i agree like well nobody goes 14 0 and 2 and sucks unless wasn't there actually wasn't the didn't the flyers win like 10 games in a row or something and then miss the playoffs didn't that happen sorry philly fans if there are any here um somebody did or was it minnesota i can't even remember columbus um but yeah 14 0 2 or sorry 14 0 and 2 is a crazy streak heading into the playoffs like they are pistol hot this Nashville team and they're, and they're relatively experienced. Like you look at the guys they've picked up Ryan O'Reilly con Smythe, like the worst he did was go to the second round woo, with the Leafs. Uh, and then, you know, Yossi's been to the finals and um, uh, I think Sissons was on that team too, that went in 17. Ooh, what a save Demko. <whistles> um, and then they go like get Ryan McDonough. Who's won how many cups with he won two cups with the, the lightning. Like, come on. There's a lot of experience here. You cannot underestimate these guys. And I'm sure Rick Tockett was like, hey, uh, don't underestimate them. I just feel like looking at the Canucks right now, they're clearly the better team, clearly the more skilled team, but it rarely comes down to that. It's all about how you execute. Oh, and uh, the playoffs can be a defensive game. The playoffs can be a toughness game. You know, that's the kind of game that Nashville's going to play. Are they going to wear you down over the course of, Six games happens. Good teams get worn down just by hits. But we'll see. It's not like Vancouver's small. Like Dakota Joshua and um, uh, T um, Tyler Myers and Nikita Zadorov, like the three of them together, could probably reach, like if they stood on each other's shoulders, could probably reach the third floor of a condo building. Like they're enormous. Um, yeah. Okay, here we go. <laughs> All those. Okay, uh, Justin has some, is going to line up some questions. Okay, Justin, go ahead. Okay. Nightmare. Uh, okay, so Nightmare LLC asks, worst arena in the big four? You mean like? What's the big four? What big four? Oh, oh, the big four leagues. Okay, I'm a dummy. It's you got to remember it's 11:30. So that's an interesting question. Worst arena name and worst jersey. Worst arena name in um, worst NHL jersey is um, up until recently it was the Buffalo Sabers. Um, oh, we got a penalty here. The Buffalo Slug is just atrocious. Nashville's had some bad jerseys too, let's be honest. Um, but they got it figured out. It's great now. So that's Saucy. And I mean, that the one, the one thing you got to say about the the Predators there, um, 
sorry, uh, it like that is Tommy Novak keeps his feet going, right? And that's why he gets that. Celsi gets that penalty for for that reason and that reason alone. Again, I'm not so sure that that's a penalty call in game five or an elimination game, but it's game one. They're going to call it a bit tighter and then it kind of loosens up. Um, worst Jersey in the NHL. I hate, and I, I know that people don't like this. When I say this, the Dallas stars glow in the dark thing has never done it for me or the, and it's like a star and there's like a D on it. I like their old Jersey, like their Stanley cup winning Jersey in 99, a little more classic, uh, worst arena name. I know they're all sponsors now, right? So, uh, it's difficult to be like too upset about any of them. Um, uh, and I, to be honest with you, when we went through all the arenas on the SDP, I didn't like, I didn't know any of them. I like, I, I know there's like four Rogers sponsored ones in Canada and a bell sponsored one in Montreal. Um, but it's like in the States, there's like insurance companies and, you know, airlines and, uh, you know, fertilizer companies or whatever. It's like, I don't know. I, you know what? I'm, I'm a bad guy to ask. I think Steve would be better to ask. Just try him on his stream. I apologize. Uh, J Justin is saying climate pledge is the weirdest. It is weird because it's Amazon. Like climate pledge is not climate pledge. It's, it's Amazon. Um, so Justin made, made a good point there. I know you guys can't hear him. Sorry. I'll, I'll have to repeat what he says. Uh, climate pledge arena, weird name. I uh, I like that they're pledging to help the climate. That's nice. Uh, and they're also pledging to get, uh, packages to your door next day shipping. Just got to have that, uh, climate pledge sponsorship. Go to download the Climate Pledge app. Actually, it's Amazon. Evangelista with the puck. Oh, Ryan O'Reilly almost had a second one there. Put it on the net. Put it on the net, please. Actually, don't. Go Canucks. Screw the Preds. They're they're they're, they're horrible. Hate them. Um. Again. Okay. So Robert Malloy says Crypto.com Arena. <laughs> I, I mean, listen, I, I know the, the, the fallbacks of crypto. I've just never, ugh, I don't know. There's so many things in this world that, that can drive you nuts. If you think too much about them, crypto doesn't of all the list of things that can bother me, uh, in a day about what's wrong with humanity. Crypto's like a long way down, a long way down. Uh, Oh, Ooh, Tyler Myers. Don't take no guff. Nothing I like that. That is, I, I like that. Colton Sissons is like yapping behind the alignment like he's going to do something. Like, listen, Colton, respect you as a, a player very much. But no, no, you're going to lose that battle every time. You can yap all you want. Tyler Myers is going to do whatever he wants to you and get used to it because you're going to be seeing him for at least the next three games and probably more. I like that kind of stuff in front of the net. It's nice to see the Leafs starting to do that. Would like to see a little more of that. Yeah. And out, penalty's over. Pretty good kill by the uh, Canucks here. Again, funny, it's kind of a clean game for, for the playoffs. It's kind of like, you know, you, don't, you haven't seen the chippiness just yet. Like, that was as chippy as it's gotten. These guys don't hate each other yet. They will. It'll happen. And we'll all be here to witness it together. I'm so excited to be hanging out with you for the whole series. This is going to be fun. But like, there's, there isn't hate yet. Somebody's going to do something though. It's probably going to happen this game. It's going to start to fester in game two. Game three, we're going to have an explosion. That's what I think. Oh, here we go. Okay. JT Miller mixing it up. Yeah, okay. Oh, JT Miller saying the F-bomb. Off to commercials we go. By the way, if you're trying to uh, uh, sync up your feed, it's uh, 422 left in the second period. Um, worst jersey. Okay, so a lot of people that are mad at me about the Dallas Stars jersey. Okay, and I get it. And then they're bringing up like the 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 Vancouver Canucks Cooperall jerseys or the Flyers Cooperall jerseys. And the jerseys weren't that bad. The Cooperalls were bad. Also, let me just throw out there that that is from the 80s. And a lot of the stuff was weird in the 80s. Like, m my parents met in the 80s. If, you, if you're if you like me and you were born in the late 80s or early 90s, go look at your parents and how they dressed and how they did their hair. It was weird. It's weird. The 80s were weird, man. They seemed like a lot of fun. Seems like we missed a good time. But uh, they were weird. So I, I kind of give them a pass on that. Plus, we're talking about current jerseys, right? 
Uh, it's easy to do old jerseys and be like, that's ugly. Like, go look at the Kansas City Scouts jerseys. And anybody that tells me, listen, the California Golden Seals jerseys, not not pretty. I know it's cool to wear, like, the retro California Golden Seals jersey, but let's be honest, not the prettiest jersey in the world. The old LA Kings jersey that matched the Laker jersey with the yellow and the purple and all that, beautiful, beautiful. Um, the Isles fish stick jerseys. Why? Okay. Why do people not like the captain highliner New York Islanders jerseys? How can you not like that? They're goofy and they're, they're, I mean, it's kind of like, I guess the nineties were weird too. Cause you had the, you had the ducks, the actual like Anaheim mighty ducks. Um, and you had, uh, you had the captain highliner Jersey. You had like the burger King LA Kings jerseys, which actually in the history of the NHL, the Burger King and uh, uh, the Burger King jerseys. Go look them up if you don't know what I'm talking about. Gretzky had to wear one of those. It's the ugliest jersey I've ever seen in my life. Ugliest, ugliest, ugliest jersey. Terrible, terrible. I cannot believe they uh, they let Wayne Gretzky put that on. That's so embarrassing. And I hope the person that um, that is uh, that di- designed that jersey isn't watching the stream because I would never want to insult your work like that. But it just feels whew, what was going on there. All right, so we're back in. 4.14 left in the second period. We're starting to see a little bit more yapping, a little bit between the refs, a little bit between the players. But as I said, I don't think these guys hate each other yet. They will. Like, I don't think that Nashville Predators players are going to be big fans of JT Miller when this is done. I don't think they're going to like him. I don't think Nashville forwards are going to like Nikita Zadorov. I don't think they're going to enjoy his company. I don't think that uh, Canucks forwards are going to like Ryan McDonough or Ryan O'Reilly. Um, any of those guys not going to like them. Kiefer Sherwood, not going to be, uh, not going to be a favorite among Canucks players. Just throwing that out there. Oh, we got a penalty and it's against the Canucks. Ooh, the plot thickens. Look at that. Two penalties in one period. That is, uh, that's interesting. What happened here? Ronick. What happened? How did he get a penalty? Was it a... First off, noted Alan Walsh client, number one. We love. We stand. Holding the stick. Did you guys see a hold? I want to see them replay that. Maybe they're not going to play it, but... Justin didn't see it either. I might have just missed it. Again, I don't have any... Um, I don't have any volume, so it's... If the uh, announcers are saying something, I can't ever... I don't know kind of puts you behind sometimes. You have to get better at watching the games on mute. Lindholm and O'Reilly in the face-off dot. That's a good face-off matchup. Roman Yossi. Evangelista. Down low. We're going to get a shot here in a second. We got to get... You got to get Forsberg the puck. Come on. He's in front of that. Oh! Tyler Myers breaks it up because he's big. He's got that big... Wingspan, big reach, baby. See, Yossi set this up. So you got Nyquist out there. You got your first unit, Nyquist, O'Reilly, Forsberg, Yossi, Evangelista. Good for Evangelista getting that spot on the first PP with those guys. There's some good names there. Okay. So Forsberg with the takeaway in neutral zone. We got it to Nyquist, who's going to get it low to O'Reilly. O'Reilly can't catch. Lucky he didn't get a penalty there. I'm not sure what the refs are going to call. I'm not complaining about their calls, but like I'm just not sure what's interference and what isn't right now. I know what it will be in Game 5 and Game 6, but Game 1s are always weird. Refs are adjusting too. Look at me not complaining about the refs. I've changed. Gone to referee rehab until they screw the Leafs tomorrow. Zucker in D or so that's no, it's not Zucker. That's Sissons. There's Zucker. Let's see what he does here. He's already got one goal. Nice shot right at the chest, but nice shot. Ooh, good stop at the line. McDonough. Hey, um, is it just me or was Tampa so good on defense that we almost kind of forgot about how good Ryan McDonough was? Cause he was obviously Tampa didn't want to trade him, but he was a bit of, he was a cap dump and people were like, well, he's a bit old. He's a bit slow. Uh, he's played pretty damn well in Nashville. 
I think Nashville is like um, a little bit like Boston. They're good at finding predators. Doesn't sound right. They're good at finding preds. <laughs> good at finding predators. <laughs> Just does not roll off the tongue. Uh, they're good at finding preds. They're, they're, there's like an archetype of what they want their guys to be. Barry Trotz specifically. I wonder what Barry Trotz thinks of how the New York Islanders play now. He probably wouldn't like it. They probably freewheel a little too much. Ooh, lucky not to get a high stick there. Yeah, Nyquist is not going to enjoy Zadorov hitting him like that all period, uh, all uh, series. Let's say that. Demko's look solid. Soros's look solid. Here's the thing: not going to win if you don't get more shots on Soros. You're just not. And I know they're down two one, and that's obvious. But you know what I'm talking about. We got to shoot volume here. We got to get him moving side to side. Shimmy. Here we go. JT Miller driving. Ooh, a little sneaky shot there. I thought he was going to go for the pass. Ooh. Yeah. Um, this Canucks first unit is pretty pretty cool. That first line with the with their top defense, that's pretty spectacular. Good for Jim Rutherford. Besser carrying the puck out. He reeled back. Justin, say that again. Okay. Oh, you see Soros tripped. Oh, did they get a penalty for that? They didn't. They got away with it. I mean, that's cool. Good for you. You should do stuff like that in the playoffs as long as you don't hurt anybody. You should do stuff like that. You should be messing with the uh, the. You should be messing with that goalie as much as possible. Get in his walls. Get in his walls. This Canucks second line has had a really good game. Garland, Lindholm, Joshua. What a great setup! Like just a great mix of skill, size. Uh, obviously, they got the goal. Um, they're not able to get the puck out right now, but hopefully, there's Lindholm's got it. No, he doesn't. Stripped. Oh. Nobody knows where it is. Oh, Garland with the shot. Ooh. Yeah, you gotta get you gotta get UC Soros off his game as much as possible. And let's be honest, it's the playoffs. Cheap shots work here. Two seconds left. Do we have a penalty? Or do we have? There was a big hit thrown in the corner. Now we're fighting. Dakota Joshua knocks somebody over. I can't stand when that happens. There's like a fight and they just shoot it, shoot the goalie. We're like, I don't care what the goalie's doing with his helmet. I just want to see the fight. Why did they blow the whistle though? Someone getting a penalty? Okay, we got JT Miller. This is such a good. I love that JT Miller drives like that. I know he couldn't get the angle on, uh, um, on the Nashville D there. I think it was Carrier, but uh, good for Lindholm. I like that. You got to be a rat sometimes. Be a rat. Just own it. Okay. That was a lot of waiting around for 2.6 seconds left in the period. <sighs> oh, now it's 3.4. I'm so glad that they changed the clock. See, I get that for an offensive zone face-off, but for a neutral zone, come on. What are we what are we kidding? So Rick Tockett, the team did exactly what he needed them to do. They come out and they score in the first 50 seconds, but then they allow one later on an absolute laser beam on a penalty that they probably shouldn't have taken uh, with Ryan O'Reilly and got to tip your hat to the Nashville Predators right now. They're looking like a seasoned playoff team. It doesn't mean they, the Canucks don't look bad. Actually, I think the Canucks look like a way better team because they probably are skill wise. Um, but what Nashville seems to be doing is limiting any sort of high danger scoring opportunity. And, Vancouver's helping them because whenever they do, they seem to be missing. There's a lot of, you know, puck wide sort of stuff happening. Oh, and there's a lot of skating and a lot of passing and not a lot of shooting. There's my analysis. Isn't that great? Great analysis. Listen, we're giving the stream away for free. I'm doing the best I can. Uh, <laughs> um, so we're going to play a clip here in a little bit. Um, and uh, we're going to do a little bit of a season preview here. Um, I'll look at the message from Jared. Hey, Jared, thanks for the donation. Uh, thanks for keeping me sane at the end of my shift. 
Um, three people just ordered delivery a few minutes before close. They had no tip, and it's a far drive. LOL. Long night for both of us. Uh, P.S. You're adorable. Love you. Thank you, Jared. No one calls me adorable except for my mother and you, and I appreciate that. Okay, first off, if you're ordering food and you're not tipping, don't order the food, guys. These guys work their butts off, these deliver people delivering, and they do, do they do it? Like, we live in Canada. Imagine choosing to deliver food in Canada when it's, like, the weather is whatever. No thanks. No thanks. Um, and by the way, thank you, everybody, for for hanging out. We got, uh, we got another great period of hockey. Now, did I pick? Did I pick? The Nashville Predators because we're hate watching. Yeah, a little bit. But we're also cheering for the Vancouver Canucks because honestly, good for them. In the like this has got to feel so good if you're a Canucks fan. Probably a little bit nervous. You're not thrilled about the fact that they're down two to one, but you know they can come back. Um, so Justin, we're gonna play uh we're gonna do a Dallas Vegas preview here that we did for uh SDP. Um, you can check it on youtube.com slash SDPN. Uh, we're gonna play that for you. I'm gonna take a breather. Maybe use the bathroom. Maybe have a drink of water. Love you all. See you in a few minutes. It's a rematch of last year's conference finals where the Vegas Golden Knights beat the Dallas Stars four games to two. Now they get to play in the first round. This is one of the most anticipated series of the entire playoff because if either team won the Stanley Cup, if, if I told you before the season started... And I've been like, all right, I have the answer. The, the NHL gave me the script. And the script says it's Vegas. And I turn over the card and you're like, yeah, I can see that. Or I said the, the script says it's Dallas. You'd be like, yeah, yep. I can see that. You'd be like, oh, well, that's the 2-3 matchup. Wait a sec. Those guys aren't in the same division. What's going on? I, I can't believe it played out this way. It sucks for the Stars. It dude. does. Well, Win or lose, this sucks. It, it does. And I'm wondering how – it's one of those series where you look at it and you go, how could this not go seven games? It's going seven. It's a million percent going seven. It'll go with whoever wants it most that evening. Mm -hmm. And the team that will want it most is the team facing elimination. And then you get to seven, and then it's a hockey game. Now, it feels like Dallas... I look at these at the playoffs a little bit like, who's healthier going into this, mm -hmm. right? It feels like Dallas is healthier because Vegas's injuries are so widely reported because of reported cap circumvention. Is Petro going to play game one? I don't know. I don't even know if we know that yet. Like, there's your answer right there as to, like, who's going to win. You know what I mean? Like, uh, listen, Vegas is unreal. And if they win, no one will be shocked. Um, but Dallas has been the most disrespected, uh, underrated team in the NHL all season. Who's talked about them? What was the last conversation you had with someone about the Dallas Stars? Well, I just think there wasn't a story because unless it was like a little bit of the goaltending issues they had midseason, it was most of it was like, well, they're about on track with where we thought they'd be, which yeah. is pretty good. Pretty good. The only time I really like was focused on the Stars was when uh, Logan Stankoven was up. I oh, up yeah. for that that hot week that he had and everything, and that was like a buzzy moment for the Stars. But outside of that, no, they just kind of went about their business, which was great for a hockey team. Well, and and he's actually such an absurd ad for that team they lead um i don't know if it's the entire nhl it's got to be though they have nine players with 50 points or more that's nine. great that's a lot that's, that's great. absolutely unbelievable and then you add logan stankoven who i'm pretty sure scored at at least a 50 point pace uh since he was recalled uh from the ahl so you can rely on, like, half of your lineup is as dangerous as the other. Uh, Jason Robertson led it. He's the closest thing they have to, like, high end. He didn't even lead them in goals, though. That was Wyatt Johnston. They have a big, mean defense. Um, if anyone can, like, put up a physical fight against the Vegas Golden Knights, it's Dallas. Yes. The Stars are not afraid of this series. I, I can't imagine they are. The one thing I would be worried about, and, and I think it's worth bringing up, is the fact that, and we mentioned this, Dallas's goaltending was a little shaky at times this year. Sure. Logan Thompson and Aiden Hill, the save percentages for Logan Thompson and Aiden Hill in this order are 908 and 909. Dallas. Ottinger got it up to a, a 905, and he's been better lately. Sure. And Scott Wedgwood is in an 899. So if... Ottinger, like, I, I feel like Dallas is far more able to um, absorb an issue with their starter than, sorry, Dallas is far less able to absorb an issue with their starter than go the Golden Knights are. I mean, if the Golden Knights wanted to alternate, they could. 
Yes. Um, and they're one of the, I mean, they're basically the only team in the NHL that I can think of, uh, maybe outside of the Washington Capitals, that could um, just screw a team up by going, hey, we're going to put a right catching goalie in net tonight. <laughs> like, just, oh. So the Capitals, the difference huh. is Charlie Lindgren is their starter. Yeah. But uh, Interesting. Like, there, there's not a ton left, and there's not a ton of good ones left. And Logan Thompson, I mean, th- think about that. Is he a top five goalie in the world? No. Is he a top five right catching goalie in the world? Well, I think he's definitely part yeah, of that, he might be. Yeah. that Logan, conversation. Logan Thompson, who has zero career playoff games. That's so crazy. Yeah. That's so crazy. And I, he was supposed to be the starter last year. And, oh, wow. Vegas doesn't even have a starter. How are they going to do anything? And they win with Aiden friggin' Hill. Yeah. Jesse, what do you think about this series? It's so tough to call. I think if, if Petro can't go in the series, like oh. I... I, I feel like I should get the freedom to change my pick to Dallas. Like, I feel like yeah. I, I'm, I'm siding with the Golden Knights right now. I look at what they did last season, and I don't see a fall off from there where they were in the playoffs and how hot they started this, the beginning of the season this year, and then they kind of had a mid-season in between. But, like, I don't think I'm too worried about them being able to flip the switch come game one. But if Petro's out, I feel like that's such an X factor. Oh, it's huge. They're the hardest, huge. hardest team to quantify. Mm-hmm. Like... You got to go with how teams play down the stretch, except every year the Vegas Golden Knights are not optimized down the stretch no. because they have so <laughs> many guys on LTIR. Noah Hannafin just got there. Thomas Hurdle literally just got there. He played like what, three games? Yep. Yeah. Yep. Before the, like, how do you. Uh, and those How do you are, evaluate the series other than just going, oh, yeah, both of them are extremely good? Those are two X Factor guys I wanted to bring up because Hurdle I'm looking at, uh, let's look at Noah Hannafin specifically. Now, he, his, his plus minus in the last Calgary Flames run where they lost to Edmonton, not great, but because Edmonton just lit them up, right? It's also plus minus. Yeah, exactly. But it was like a negative 11 and 12. Uh, so that's, that's not great. Uh, but he's a minute eater. He was playing 23 minutes a night with the Calgary Flames. That one's an interesting one because I, I want to know how he fits into the lineup. And is he Petro protection? If Petro's not there, can they manage? Even if, let's say Petro's playing the first game, what if he doesn't play game three or game four? You know, is Noah Hannafin a guy that's going to bring some of that up? Are you going to get some of that old man, Alec Martinez, crazy, uh, uh, you know, he's got tons of playoff experience. And then I want to add this. The San Jose Sharks have not been to the playoffs since 1819, which mm-hmm. is five years ago. The last time they were, though, Thomas Hurdle had 15 points in 19 games. Ten of those were goals. He was really good in that run. Yeah. And I bet he's chomping at the bit to, oh. to do this again. I, I, I look at him as like a huge X factor. My favorite thing about their two additions, Hurdle and Hannafin, the two biggest additions, they're a pair of 6'3 men. This yep. is the team that is the biggest team in the National Hockey League. And what did they do? They went out and got two guys to make their average height even bigger. Like, they have the biggest decor, and that's a, that's why I'm not going to pick, pick against them in the first round, because I think the size that they bring to the table and the physicality and the fact that nobody can push them around in any type of hockey game, I think is a huge X factor come the playoffs. Um, speaking of X factors come the playoffs, this guy's not necessarily known for being big. He's not even known for being the most high end. Since Sidney Crosby and Alexander Ovechkin's rookie year, Ovechkin, third in playoff goals. Crosby, second in playoff goals. Oh. First with 73, Joe friggin' Pavelski. He's <laughs> wow. so good at this, and he turns back the clock every bloody year. And he was going through it uh, with the injuries last playoff run. He still found a way to contribute. Um, I want to know how he, how old man Joe Pavelski is going to compete with the biggest decor in the league. Best stat before we get to our picks. Um, This is from Jesse Granger. The Golden Knights have participated in six postseasons in seven years. All six have involved Pete DeBoer. Oh, what? Wow. <laughs> so wow. Pete DeBoer was in San Jose their first two seasons when the Golden Knights faced the San Jose Sharks in 18 and 19. Okay. Pete DeBoer was the coach of Vegas in 2020 and 2021. Pete DeBoer is the coach in Dallas in 23 and 24. That's so dumb. Every time the Vegas Golden Knights have gone to the playoffs, it has involved Pete DeBoer. What wow. a life for him. <laughs> Isn't that funny? That's, That's so hilarious. Random. That's cool. That's hilarious. Well, and 
He's got a way bigger axe to grind uh, being the guy they gassed uh, mm-hmm. this time around. Yeah. Wow. What oh, a boy. stat. Shout out Jesse Green. Right? Wow. This okay. An oddity. Really good one. <laughs> so, picks? Uh, I mean, the sexy pick is Vegas. They are the reigning defending Stanley Cup champions. Uh, but not every year is uh, the same. They friggin' missed the playoffs and then won the Stanley Cup. Mm-hmm. Uh, it could easily have gone this way if they had like a cold week at the end. Uh, I'm going to say Dallas in seven in what might be the series of the playoffs. Jesse. I, unlike Steve, like sexy. So I'm going to pick the Vegas Golden Knights. Wow. Did Jesse just bring sexy back? That's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, Jesse. How many games? Uh, I'll do seven. Seven? Yeah. Okay. Vegas and seven. I can't remember what I said in other videos. <laughs> I don't know what I said in the podcast. You said Leafs and four. I'm telling you what I'll feel what I feel right at this moment because I'm pretty delirious. I'm You're not gonna, gonna lie. be right and wrong on every series. So this is how I'm undefeated. Yeah, this is, people this can just is, splice together you being right or wrong about everything. I am. I'm a. I am God. <laughs> you know, it's funny. The more you talk about it, though, you you research this shit on your own, and you're like, okay, that's how I feel. And then I hear you guys bring up stuff, and I'm like, yeah, that's a really good point. <laughs> so here's what I'm. Feeling. I feel Thank like you. Yeah. Here's here's my here's what here's what I'm thinking right now. Okay, because I can't remember what I said 20 minutes ago when we finished the podcast. Dope, dope. My name's Adam. Yeah, that's, that's, oh, no, no. <laughs> that's what goes on internally. I'm looking at this and I'm going, again, who's healthier? What kind of Mark Stone are we getting coming off a last rated spleen? What are we getting off a, of Thomas Hurdle based, coming off his injury? Um, is Petrangelo going to play? Like so much of that is left to chance. I did say seven games. Ooh. There are two teams in the series. Dallas Stars. Mm-hmm. Dallas right. Stars. That is my favorite way of annoying my wife, by the way. What? Because she always goes, oh, what was I going to say? And I go, oh, my name's Sarah Louise. <laughs> <laughs> All right. She hates it. There's your picks. Uh, we'll see if we're right or wrong. Probably wrong. Oh, we are all the way back. All the way back. It's midnight in Toronto, and we're doing what all Torontonians should be doing right now, which is watching the Vancouver Canucks. Now, we got we to gotta set up for the third period here. We've got some time. We can do some fun stuff in between because we're, you know, we're not quite playing yet. But the Canucks are down 2-1. to one. It's their first home playoff game with butts and seats in nine years. Uh, fans are pretty excited. And they should be. Was it nine years or eight years? 2015, technically. Okay, so eight years. That's still a long time. Like, think of all the things that were going on. I think, like, Despacito was the big hit. Or no, See You Again, Wiz Khalifa. That was the big hit. See You Again. Remember that song? Haven't I listened to that over and over and over again? Jesse and I played that so many times on the radio. And no, none of it was our choice. Uh, they they kind of decide all that for you. Um, I got to tell you. Lots going on. Lots changed. But we're we're gonna we're gonna go uh we're gonna go and enjoy this. And I feel like this is a great opportunity for the Canucks to come in. And if they can put together a strong third period here, they started off really, really well in the second period, and the Nashville kind of caught up and scored and whatever. Um, I feel like this is gonna be the they need a spark here, like another goal early on, like they did, win this game. Get people to start believing in the magic. Don't wake them up yet. Canucks fans are riding a high from just winning the division. You know, like there was, they didn't have a sniff at this for 10 years. And now they've won the division. Like this is, don't, don't wake them up. This is a good dream. It's a good dream to be in. I want, I want Canucks fans to live in this as long as possible because I'm going to be honest with you as a Leaf fan, we, uh, oh yeah, sorry. 2015 was nine years ago. I was right. Um, yeah, it's 2024. Oh my God. Uh, I, I just don't want you to have to wake up. I want you to enjoy this. I don't want you to be stressing watching like I did, uh, and, and do like, I I was thinking about this. I was talking about this with my wife yesterday and she spent the entire day nervous. Like she barely talked. She was like, Oh, I'm just really nervous about the game, whatever. And like, it's 9am Nat. And, uh, cause she's like a, a super, super big Lee fan. And, I, I was like, do we enjoy this? She's like, rarely. Like, it was cool when they won against Tampa and, and got to the second round. But, like, it, most of it's stress. And I think if you're a Canucks fan, you get to just enjoy this. You're at the stage where it's like, listen, 
could the Canucks win? Yeah, I think everybody thinks that they've got a pretty good outside shot of winning the Cup. Why not? They won the division. They're a great team. But we haven't seen them get it done in the playoffs in a long, long time. So it's fair enough to have those questions. I don't want Canucks fans to lose their first game. That's too Leaf. You know, Leafs lose game ones all the time. Canucks? Nah. Not my Vancouver Canucks. Not my Canucks. Let's talk in the chat a little bit here. Um, Peter Worthington, it's 10 p.m. in Calgary. Hopefully the Canucks can put it, put it away in OT because uh, before OT because I got to work tomorrow. Yeah. Um, Patrick Innes, I moved from Scotland to Southern California. Uh, the change of watching Leafs games at midnight to 4 p.m. Total game changer. You know what? Living out west and this far away, I only got uh, Calgary. Um, but even watching the Leafs start at 5 p.m. was so cool on a Saturday. And then you'd, you know, um, and then you'd have the uh, the Calgary game right afterwards. You have a Can Canucks game right afterwards. By the way, I didn't realize until I moved to Calgary how much Flames fans and Canucks fans hate each other. Didn't know that the, that rivalry was so intense. It was very intense. I moved out there right when the Canucks made the finals, actually. That was like the same week as I moved to Calgary. Um, and I'll never forget being in a bar in in uh, in Calgary watching it, and everybody was rooting for the Boston Bruins. Yeah, crazy. Um, uh, I'm in Ohio, so tired. Um, Jeff E. makes a really good point. Being a Leaf fan feels like a massive mistake. Jeff, I feel that every day. Imagine basing your whole career on it. Imagine. Couldn't be me. Who'd be stupid enough to do that? Definitely wouldn't be me. Ontario's most haunted. If it goes to triple OT, will you stay on the stream? Yeah, I'm going to stay on the stream. Like, listen, we're going to have, um, we're going to have like super late nights here. That's going to happen. It's if you go on a run, there's at least one game that goes to double overtime, right? So we're going to, we're doing this and we're going to be in this together, right? We're going to stick around. I know I'm looking at the uh, concurrent watches. By the way, there's so many people watching, and I'm just really thrilled to, to have you guys all along. But like, I'm watching it go down a little bit because people got to go to bed. I get it. But not you and I. You and I, we're staying up. Uh, Wig Wiggleman. Wiggleman? Wilgerman? Uh, what do you think about teams trading for Ryan O'Reilly in the offseason? Uh, sucking for half the year and then going on insane runs at the end of the season. Man, I loved Ryan O'Reilly as a Leaf, and I was super mad when I found out that Nashville and the Leafs offered him the same deal, and he went to Nashville. Boo. But I get it. It's great to live there. Tax-free state. I get it. And Luke Shen, too. We missed him this year. He, he felt like the only really, truly great fit for Morgan Riley. Um, anyway. Uh, uh, by the way, they did just drop the puck, 1953. So I later on in the series and throughout the playoffs, because I'm going to be doing all the Western games, we're going to have uh, score clocks on the stream, so it won't be so hard. But for now, uh, I'm just going to tell you that there's 1953 left in the third period. That's right. We're seven seconds in. Let's freaking go, baby. I didn't even have a coffee for the third period. I thought about it. I'm not one of those people that uh, can't sleep on coffee. I can have a coffee and go right to sleep. I can sleep anywhere, anytime. But uh, I felt like didn't need it. We're up. We're here. We're going. Uh, looks like Nashville's coming to play in the uh, third period here. If they get another goal, is that it? Here we go. Oh, oh my. What a great setup. Besser to Miller. Wow. If Miller just keeps that a little bit lower, that's in. Wow. Man, that that line for the Canucks can do some special things. Uh, Aris, Aris Mix 23 put this towards a coffee. Five bucks. Watching as a Hawks fan in Ohio and staying up with you. Playoff hockey is the best time of the year. Thank you so much for hanging out. I appreciate you doing that. That means a lot. Um, Dog Main asks, why the studio and not the crib? Because um, my place is not big enough for my wife and my daughter not to hear me. And I have a booming voice, as I'm sure you heard when I cracked the microphone. By the way, Vancouver's on the uh, power play here. Um, and it's just, okay, that's sort of a, again, is that Lozon that's in the box? That's a, if that's what it is, yeah, it's Lozon in the box. Yeah, that's a, that's not a call in like two games. This The league is so weird. Game one of the playoffs, are, it's so weird. There's like three games all year that are ref like this. You can get away with occasional murder. But by game four, then you can get away with full-blown 
first degree murder, but not yet. We got to work up to the, we got to work our way up the murder levels here. And we're just not there yet. Right now, manslaughter at best. Brock Besser had 16 power play goals. Brock Besser, what a season. Who saw that? Like, okay, I know players are all like big on betting on themselves, but do you think Brock Besser would have told you at the start of the year? Yeah, I'm dropping 50 this year. No, come on. Like, I, I, if he'd said 35, I'd have been like, I guess if he has a great year. But man, he's been good. And it's not like he didn't have the talent, but the injury, sorry, he had 40 goals. Um, but his career high before that was 29, and that was his like breakout rookie year. See what I mean? Like, no one's expecting that. It's awesome. Can he get it done in the playoffs, though? That's what matters. JT Miller with the puck over to Patterson, bouncing over his stick. Quinn Hughes being Quinn Hughes to Besser to Patterson to Hughes to Patterson to good save by Saros there. And that's out. Do you think they leave the first power play unit on? Kind of looking at the Canucks um, units here. I mean, nothing's gonna, nothing is going to match uh, Garland, Miller, Besser, Hughes, Patterson. But that uh, Dakota Joshua Lindholm line has been pretty good, and I like Philip Hronik. I really like him as a defenseman. I think he's great. I couldn't believe Detroit let him go, but I guess they needed to make room for Maurice Sider. But still, ooh. Great play. See, okay. What Pedersen does there, super simple. Okay, now he's getting beaten up in front of the net. Okay, we're going to start hating each other here in a few minutes. This is good. Um, Is really simple. Grab it and go. Look at this. Watch. Ready? Go. Drive the net. Boom. Those, those are the kinds of shots, and I know Soros had it. Those, he just barely got that. Those are the kinds of shots that go like underneath your blocker and in the net. That's that's a that was a good little play there. I like that. Pedersen uh, wins the face off. Connor Garland misses the puck. We got JT Miller misses the puck too. Quinn Hughes is going to bring it back. Are they going to switch up the units? I can't tell. I'm sure that they've probably said it on the TV, but I can't see that. So I'm going to no nope, Miller's out there. Besser's out there. Pedersen's out there. They're just going to leave him out for two minutes. Good, good. Put that second line out there. Put the second power play unit out there with like 20 seconds to go because they're pretty good. Hoglander, um, Lindholm, Joshua, Ronick, Sousey. Love that. Love that. Love that for you, Queen. Here we go. Yeah. So Hoglander and Joshua are out there. Yeah, I, I guess if you're playing power play for the Canucks and you're not on power play one, you don't play power play for the Canucks. It's kind of like the Leafs. There's so much talent on the first unit. It's like, ah, the second unit, you might see 20 seconds a game. It's nice that you can say you're on the power play, but you're not. You're just sitting there. You're just, you're just watching greatness. So Justin is asking for a clock update, and he's smart to ask. 1720 going in the third period if you're trying to sync up your stream with ours. I am watching on the sports and that app, and the reason I keep saying that is because it for some reason is a lot different than the, than cable is a lot different than ESPN. If you're watching from the States and by the way, hi everybody from America. I know there was a lot of you here tonight. Um, so I just want to make sure that you can see everything. And Zadorov with the weirdest icing of all time. Nope. Somebody touched it. How did that go all the way down? It's like the slowest moving non icing I've ever seen. Uh, is that offside? Got to figure that out. Um, see, I don't know if you can see what Nashville's doing now that they're, um, now that they are, uh, oh, here we go. Forsberg. Oh, what a save. If you got that, that was a good save. Big save. Big save, Demko. Yeah. Uh, Nashville, I'm going to, I'm going to just guarantee you this. They're going to start clogging that neutral zone and it's going to be unfun to watch. If you love boring hockey, if you love folding laundry brushing your teeth and missing nothing. Nashville playoff hockey. But you know what? Forget it. I can't even say that. Barry Trotz playoff hockey. If there's any Islanders fans in the chat, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Low event. Nothing happened and we didn't want we wanted it that way. I didn't come to watch great hockey. I came to watch boring and win. 
Myers flips the puck up past the red line. Here we go. Patterson is out there. Is he double shifted? Is that what's going on here? No. He's got his line mates. I forget sometimes that Patterson doesn't play with Besser and JT Miller all the time. That's right. He centers his own line. Idiot. I uh, I got to say, good for Sam Lafferty. Damn. Should have hung on to him. All right. Did uh, I kind of looked for a second there that Celsi might have been shaking his arm. I wonder if he got a little slash. Di Giuseppe in. Di Giuseppe Pizzeria is in. Deep. We got uh, we got a little fourth line action. Little Teddy Bluger, Ilya Mikheyev, the all grind line. And guess what? They just took a penalty. Great. Nothing you love more as a coach than an offensive zone penalty for something stupid that probably in a few games would not even be. Not Di Giuseppe. What did he do? I didn't even see it. Did you guys see it? So he was fighting with Ryan O'Reilly. Uh, yeah. Ref's going to call that every time. Tripping penalties are stupid in the playoffs, guys. I don't know what to tell you. You can't do it. You can't. Talkie can't. Look at him. He's thinking. He's like, I can't send my fourth line out there and have that happen. You can't. You can't. Now you're, you're behind in the game. You, you can tell he's like, he's not happy. I would not want Rick Tockett sucking his teeth like that when, um, when I get over to that bench after serving those two minutes. I'm not playing again that tonight. That's how I'd feel. He's not, he's not going to play me again. It's great. Justin says he's not leaving the penalty box. Like Rick Tockett, it, it, man, watching him play in the NHL, he was a tough MFer. Try not to swear too much in case there's any kids present. He was tough. And like, yeah, I don't know. That's not good. Fourth line finally lets you out there and you do that. But we move on. It's not like the Canucks don't. Oh, whoa. Ryan O'Reilly has been snooping tonight. He's he's had three or four really, really good chances. And he's got a good shot. As the Leafs found out when he scored, I think, two goals against them when, when we played each other early in the season, when the Leafs were really super bad to start the year. <laughs> oh, I've always wondered, are there any goalies in the chat? Does it hurt to take a puck off the face? Like when you got that, like I, I, I'm, I'm sure at the NHL level it does, but like your men's league goalie, does it still hurt when you get, you get one off the noggin, even though you're wearing that helmet? I got to know. I got to know. Has to hurt. Has to hurt. Let me see. We know? Anybody? What we got here? Yeah. Uh, Matthew Crocker says it does not hurt. Face, yes. Side of the face is the worst. I wonder why. Is it because, well, it'd be like a slap. Uh, it doesn't hurt you, but you feel it. I have taken a hundred kilometer an hour lacrosse ball off the face. Yo, man, lacrosse is too extreme. <laughs> it's such a fun game to watch. Like I used to go see Toronto rock games and they were like 10 bucks and people were just getting just tipsy in the aisles. But, uh, what a, what a rock and sport, crazy sport. I don't know how you sign up to be a goalie there. How does that happen? Like, how do you become a lot? You know what? I, I saw a lacrosse game and I thought, well, let me put on this gigantic V-shaped pad that makes me look like, I don't know, like the abominable snowman from uh, Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer and a helmet. And I would love to take a big rubber ball off my face. I'm so excited about that. Um, also block shots. One. Skinny down low and wide up top is the reverse grimace. <laughs> it's also the reverse me. <laughs> um, uh, John, I, I played against JT as a kid. Yeah, I heard John Tavares was a pretty good lacrosse player. I know his uncle is like a legend, like one of the greatest lacrosse players of all time. Did you guys also know that Wayne Gretzky, uh, according to several sources, 
uh, was a better lacrosse player than he was hockey player. And this is a, when he was a kid, Gretzky scored like 370 goals one season. Like other teams, parents hated him and wanted him kicked out of the league because he was so good. And he was better at lacrosse. Crazy. Uh, Melon, uh, Melon Gar- Gargantuar. It's a good name. Uh, funnily enough, I'm looking at new helmets. As Adam mentioned, uh, there is a crack in the chin on my mask. Yeah, I wouldn't be wearing that mask anymore. Would not want to do that. Paul C says, Taylor Hall shattered my cup once. True story. Can you believe that there are actually NHLers? Not many, apparently, but there are NHLers um, that don't wear a cup. Isn't that nuts? Won't be nuts for long, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> beep, 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 beep. Listen, guys, it's 1218 where I am, and I'm a dad. I'm not used to being up this late. So you're going to get all the jokes. All the jokes. Uh, Dakota Joshua runs it deep. You know, okay, there's Mikhaev's out there. Okay, so they did. Okay, so this is interesting. Mikhaev's out there with Joshua, and it looks like Teddy Blucher. So Di Giuseppe is sitting on the bench. I wonder if he takes another shift. So that is the fourth line, but without the guy that just took the stupid penalty. Is he in trouble? Or had they just not changed yet? We'll find out. There he is. No, that's Hoglander. No, no. Patterson's out there. Got to get that second line out there. Got to get that third line. The third lines look good. Love the third line. Lindholm got the goal earlier. Here we go. Across. Lafferty. Deep, deep, deep. Ooh. Deep into Hoglander there, and I think we would have had a really good scoring chance. Uh, Quinn Hughes being just a wow, he's fast. I got to give uh, Nashville credit here. We're we got like eleven twenty five left in this game. What a save by Demko! Eleven twenty five left in this game, and there hasn't even been thirty shots total. Like I've seen Leaf games where they got thirty shots for and against in like the second period. Uh, Nobody's nobody's shooting the lights out here. I, I'm so glad that I signed up for the low event hockey series. Man, I should have also done the Islanders and Carolina Hurricanes. That would have been cool too, right? Right? Um, I played third base. This is from Whiskey0800. I played third base and never wore a can. And I had a guy on my team that didn't wear one catching because he said it limited his ability to feel the ball when blocking. That's too much feeling for me. Uh, Randy Teeple. I played Junior A, but never wore a cup. Randy, you never wore a cup ever? Even when you were like a kid in house league? You guys. Um, Jonathan Siraco, Adam is cursed to only do live streams for boring games. Well, if I stop picking the Nashville Predators, I'm, I'm picking on the Nashville Predators, um, maybe I wouldn't have so much of an issue. But, you know, by the way, these headphones, they're great. But you do get like a little itchy behind the ears. It's a little hot, you know? Gets a little hot. Paps. Hey, Adam. How you doing? I'm good, man. Chilling. 12.20 a.m. where I am. Joined the last half of the third period here. I wonder if the Canucks... I, I got I to gotta think the Canucks are going to start cheating for offense. In which case, we're going to get some... Hopefully, some open scoring chances. Because they really... Like, I really liked their game at the beginning of the second period. They got the goal, got back in the game, and they're in it now. But, like, Nashville is for sure making the Canucks play a Nashville brand of hockey. Uh, the fact that the Canucks only have 15 shots at this point, that's not the Canucks. Canucks are high octane, quite responsible defensively, and good goaltending. It's not a lot not, like, not, a lot not to like about the Canucks, and Nashville is dictating play. Let's be honest. Yeah, have to, you have to give Nashville credit there. Oh, here we go. Here we go. 11 18 left, by the way, if you're trying to sync your stream with mine. Besser, across to. Oh, oh my God. Get that puck down. That must have hit a stick. I thought Besser had one there. He was right. Perfect. Oh, it's a goal. What a goal, baby. We're tied up. It's the captain. I think the captain shot it. I don't know if anybody tipped it on the way in. And look at the Canucks crowd, baby. It's not a whiteout because that's Winnipeg's thing. But they're white towels and we're right by the white house. 
Okay, what do we have here? So Quinn Hughes, point. It looks like JT Miller tipped it. It looks like it, but I slow it down, Sportsnet. Somebody tipped it. Okay, slow, super slow, please. No, it was. I think it was a Nashville player. Am I wrong? Am I wrong? Did a Nashville player tip that? 18, uh, sorry, 11.01, by the way, left in the third period. We got a tie game. And we got 32 shots total for the entire game. 32. Okay. 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 That's how it's got to be. Garland. Ooh, out front. Pedersen scored. Oh, it's Joshua. What am I saying? Why am I saying Pedersen? Oh! I hope you're not listening with a big sub over, but what a goal. That's two goals in less than 10 seconds, baby. That is awesome. See, this is what I was talking about in the intermission. I don't want Canucks fans to wake up from this dream. Just enjoy this. This is amazing. Oh. Okay, great forecheck there by Lindholm. And then Garland gets digs it out, and Dakota Joshua buries it. What a great play. That's a great forecheck. And Dakota Joshua got it short side. He had way more open on the glove side. But no, he's not uh, He's not gutter stall. He's not going glove. He's going blocker because he's not fancy. He's all business, baby. Yes. Canucks fans, I'm freaking thrilled for you. Good for you. That's awesome. By the way, I'm a Canucks fan. What am I saying? These are my Canucks. Wow. I bet it's just cracking loud in there. I bet it's just awesome. And there's going to be parties on the street in Vancouver tonight. I'm going to check the weather. What's the weather in Vancouver? Vancouver weather. It's 10 degrees right now. Uh, tomorrow, it should be, ooh, looks like you're going to have a nice day tomorrow, Vancouver. 15 degrees and sunny. How about that? And then Tuesday, 18 degrees and sunny. And then it's going to rain for the next five days. So if they win, you get out there and party tonight, Vancouver. You go, you enjoy this. But they still got a lot uh, you know, ways to go. And I think that's Quinn Hughes. Is that Quinn Hughes' first playoff goal ever? I think it is. I think we just saw history, guys. That's pretty cool. Nice for the captain. Love that. Love that for him. I could be wrong about his first goal. Oh, no, he scored in the he scored in 1920. Got two of them. Man, he was good on that run. I'm remembering it now. I couldn't watch a lot of the um, Canuck games during the, the COVID shutdown because I had to do um, the morning show. So I would watch. I would jump on and like rewatch the games on the Sportsnet app or whatever. And, and uh, it, you know, that whole that whole time was a bit of a blur. I'm not going to lie. Sorry, Canucks fans. I don't remember much about that time, too. Um, I could barely remember the Leaf series, which was horrible. And I'm glad I can't remember it. I just bury that stuff, like so many Leaf things. Here we go. Phil Roenick, Quinn Hughes, out there again. Why? Why are they out there? That's right. We're going to get another goal. We're going to make it 4-2. We're going to take the pressure off, and we're going to shut the Predators down. This is where – see, I kept I, – I, I felt like, and I don't know if I'm, I'm crazy here, but they – the Canucks really did feel like they were going to capitalize at some point. And you had to just shake UC Sorrows up. And I thought you got to go volume shooter on him. But uh, they were lucky enough to get a squeak a couple through. They still don't have 20 shots. And we're nine minutes left. But it looks like they're just, they're using the speed now. And if they continue to use their speed this way, they are going to be able to dispatch the Predators pretty quickly. you got to use your speed against this team, though. Um, oh, DJ Giuseppe's out there. Good for him. Good for him. Don't do something stupid. Let's get a goal. Let's, let's, let's prove Rick Tockett right for putting you out there after that penalty. Let's go. There you go. No, I, I, I'm not trying to pick on him. I just think, you know, everybody, everybody who's played hockey knows you get in the doghouse sometimes. Shit happens. Connor Garland has looked really good tonight too. Man, he's a great puck handler. Shifts so well. Backhand, forehand able to move his body between you and uh, like the defender and the puck. Really smart. Here we go. Okay. Zadorov with a weird dump that actually gets past Lafferty. Ooh, is that a penalty? I feel like that should be a penalty, ref. You're calling the other stuff tripping. That's a, that's a trip. He kept his feet moving. That's a trip. 
that's the first real miss I could see all night. They've they've called a pretty good game. A little tight for my liking for the playoffs, but what are you going to do? Not going to complain. Our Canucks are up. They're winning. Man, that was exciting. That was so cool. Love seeing Canucks fans excited. Always, uh, oh, here we go. We got a nice little turnover. Be- uh, here we go. No. Oh, my God. What a hit. Woo. Holy smokes. Glad he's okay. Ronick with the shot. Wow. Uh, I think that was Carrier just late. Oh, did he shoot the puck out? Oh, it's deflected. Okay, now they hate each other because of that hit. Michael McCarron laid out. I think it was Brock Besser. Um, laid him out. And um, Canucks, can't let him do that. Can't let him do that. Right here. Right here. Oh, it was Suter. Watch this hit. This is bonkers. Oh, no, they're not showing that hit. Yeah, McCarron had a hit earlier in the thing. I don't know if they're going to show it, but wow. Good hit. Good, solid playoff hit. Can't let him do that to your guy. Apparently, Canucks fans are chanting Soros or were chanting Soros. That's um, Sportsnet stats posted that that two goals uh, fastest in franchise playoff history. Good for them. This is great. Um, it's kind of fun. It's kind of fun watching this. It reminds me, I'm going to make it about Toronto for a second. It reminds me a lot about the Leafs when they kind of surprised and made the playoffs in 2017 when they played Washington, who were like the cup favorites. Um, there's just something so magic about that first time where it's been a few years and you get into the playoffs and you're like, like, could we, could we win a few? I don't think the Canucks are just looking to win a few. The Leafs were like objectively a very, okay hockey team with some high-end young talent back then. Canucks are far more balanced, far more be- far better put together. Um, and it's just, it's just fun. Like as a fan, like how do you not love seeing that and wishing it was your team instead of seven years or eight years of depression? By the way, did you know that the Leafs and Bruins are tied in one way right now? And that is playoff appearances in a row. Bruins have played a lot more games, though. Let's be honest about that. Yeah. Um, okay, so here's here's my question. We've got a few minutes left in the game. I will do a time check uh, if, you're, if you're aligning your streams. I need to know in the chat right now, what do we have for the final score? And you can say Preds. You can say Vancouver. You can say whoever you want. I need to know the final score in the chat ASAP. What is this? What's the score? How's this game end? Is it 4-2? Do the Preds tie this up and make it 3-all? And we go to triple OT, and I'm up till 3 a.m. with you. I'm in. I'm all the way in. What's it going to be, guys? What's it going to be? Also, uh, while you're here, just a quick reminder, if you haven't, click subscribe. Quick, li- click like, too, because more people will find the video if you click like. If you do a little uh, subscribe fest. 708 left in the third if you're trying to uh, align streams with me. And I think it'll be so this is going to be interesting because Nashville is going to go full offense now. Oh, the Sportsnet app just dropped the feed. And now I'm at 641. 640 to 638, 636. Sorry about that. It just reloaded on me, and that's what happened. Okay. We got, yeah. Okay, so we're seeing a lot of 4-3 uh, Preds quadruple OT. How dare you? How freaking dare you? Okay. 4-2 Canucks. 6-9. Um, nice. <laughs> Four, but yeah. See, this is, uh, so 6-18 left in the third. Lindholm, Shen's in there. They're all starting to hate each other a little bit. McDonough and Shen, that's not fun to play against. That's not fun. It's slow. It's not fast. You can you can you can get past that. But like still not fun. If they catch you uh catch you in front of the net, you're getting a stick to the ribs. You're getting a cross check. It's not gonna feel good. <sighs> what a save by Demko and Evangelista there. Wow. That must have been when the stream dropped because I didn't see that. Wow. Man, Demko's been great. 
when you need when you need a save, the guy's been doing it. Oh, jo- yeah, no wonder Dakota Joshua. Yeah, he kind of snowed UC Saros. I get it. Six eighteen left in the third. Let's go. Uh, punk punks are punk. Two dollars. Hey, thank you for donating. Unrelated, but congrats on Lando. That's right, Lando Norris of McLaren finishing uh, finishing second today to Max Verstappen because Max Verstappen cannot be stopped, at least right now. But we love McLaren. Go McLaren. If you're not in F1, uh, you are now, and you're a McLaren fan with me, okay? Those are the rules. Those are the rules. I claim you. Uh, here we go. So, uh, okay. Lynn Holmes out there. Canucks are, yeah, that's what I thought. Canucks are going to do what I thought the Preds would do, which is they're going to allow one man deep and everybody else is going to sit in the neutral zone. I don't know how well that's going to work for them uh, because I don't know how well that works for anybody that isn't like Nashville. Um, like offensive teams tend not to do that great with the one, three, one or a one, four look like they were doing. Look, see Hoglanders in deep four check him hard, try to get carry to, you know, mess it up. Um, but you see, like they still gain the neutral zone and they get, they go right in the offensive zone. I think the Canucks, if it were me, and I'm not smart at this, but I would say put two guys deep, leave three guys high, um, try to force a turnover and just burn out time. By the way, exactly five minutes left in the third period for anybody wanting to know. Exactly five minutes left. Well, 4.54 now. <laughs> oh, what a save, Demko. Right on Forsberg. Forsberg's been a little dangerous tonight. He's not been quite Ryan O'Reilly level, but uh, there's things happening. Here we go. Potential breakaway now. JT Miller is not God. He might be close some nights, but he's not God. He can't catch that puck. Evangelista. Uh, can that? Okay. What's Nashville doing here? What are we doing? Puck between the legs here. When do you see that? 420. Nice. Left in the uh, third period. Guys, I'm really enjoying hanging out with you like this. This is cool. I'm like the friend of the party that just won't shut the hell up. Right? You got that friend. Can't, can't stand awkward silences. That's me. It's me tonight. Okay, so 359, we're going to get a face-off in the defensive zone. Are we getting a commercial break? We're getting a CBC Olympics read, but are we getting a commercial break? I don't know. Um, we're not. Okay. So um, I'm looking at this. So you got Lindholm, Joshua out there, Garland. That's a great line to have out there right now. This is the line you want out there. This is the guy. These are the guys that got to get this done. You got to beat O'Reilly in the faceoff dot. Not easy to do. Oh, Lindholm does. Quinn Hughes is out there. Boom. Out. Oh, not out. Okay. O'Reilly lost his stick. McDonough. Over, oh, almost too many men. Yeah, be careful. That was good. Good on the Canucks uh, third line there to, to kind of neutralize that. That was looking dangerous. Ryan O'Reilly, who's looked really, really good tonight, probably could have had two or three at this point. Um, yeah, that was good. That was a big face-off win by Lynn Holm. Maybe they shouldn't have traded him after all. And we got that fourth line out there. Rick Tockett. He's showing some love for the fourth line. I like that. With 319 to go in a one goal game. That's faith. Not every team can do that. Big hit at the blue line. Team, team loves it. Fans love it. They're cheering. Oh, what do we have? Is this offside? Oh, is Adoroff lost his helmet? He's a dangerous man. That's Adoroff. I was really hoping the Leafs would get him, by the way. Good check. So okay, I'm looking at the wow. Woo! <laughs> such a beast. Look at him. Man, he sent that guy like skywards. He like lifted him up. Wow. Wow. I man, I love him. I love him so much. Cole Smith, you learned to fly today. You got your pilot's license. Congratulations, Cole Smith. Congratulations, Zadorov. Wow. Um Okay, so uh, Vancouver's looking really good on the shutdown here. They haven't allowed a lot of chances, and I'm thinking that um, uh, I'm thinking they can do this. I'm thinking they can do this. What I'm curious about, because we're in commercial break right now, 
is when we come back, are we going to get a pulled goalie? Is Andrew Burnett going to pull his goalie early? Is he an early pull guy or is he leave it too late guy? That's what I got to know. That's what I got to know. <laughs> yeah, uh, Justin said it's so unfair that those are the only two answers. That's the thing with Nashville is there, it's simple hockey, right? And that's why they've been successful. They've got guys that are willing to play simple hockey. They've been rewarded for it. Pretty magical season, especially after the U2 stuff. Not that I'm... Not that my take has survived that quite well. I look like an idiot. But uh, honestly, like they deserve all the credit in the world. I'm just curious, like, okay, you you pull the goalie with three minutes left. Is that too early? You're out, you're coming off a stoppage. Three, was there 312 left or something? Coming off a stoppage, you get one minute out there for your top line. Then you throw somebody else out. And then you hopefully get your top line back out there for another minute. Or do you just leave them on for three straight minutes? Try to tie it. I don't know. Listen, I wouldn't want tired legs against these Vancouver Canucks. I wouldn't. If they get a change in and your guys are tired, they're already not that fast. You get Quinn Hughes on a roll. He's scoring an open net. I'll be curious to see what they do. And uh, Vancouver wins the faceoff. And Zadorov rightly turns around in the defensive zone, blows a few more seconds. They get it deep. Uh, and Nashville still doesn't have full possession of it. And look at that. Look at that. The Canucks putting two, three guys deep below the blue line. Turn it. Don't let them get set up. Exactly that, guys. Exactly that. Nashville is not getting set up. It's going back into their zone. Canucks have burned through 40 seconds here. That's really smart. Really, really smart. I guess it was a good idea by Brunette not to uh, pull the goalie. I would have thought, um, uh, yeah, see, they haven't had the puck. It would have already been 4-2 Canucks by now. So it was probably a good good call by him. The Canucks grabbed that. They would have had they would have had a goal by now, I think. Ross Millsap, get the hell out of the way, linesman. <laughs> Man, I had a linesman come up to me at a, uh, the Easter Seals tournament we do with Steve every year and was like, oh, you don't like linesmen, huh? It's not that I don't like linesmen. I think they have a valuable place in every other level of hockey except for the NHL where literally computers could replace them. Also, I can't... But Justin said, I don't hate them. They just shouldn't exist. <laughs> also, drop the puck, guys. Like, just drop it. Stop Stop with the thing, the faking it. So annoying. All right. Now Nashville's got full possession, but you got two Canucks deep, and they're fast. And I believe they just, okay, not quite a um, an icing, but, like, that's a real Hail Mary shot. It does sort of work out for the Preds. Ooh, big hit. Big hit. By Zadorov. Man, he's thrown the body a couple of big times. Now we got an empty net and we got Yossi. We got uh, we got the basically the PP1 for um Nashville out there. Evangelista, O'Reilly. Um, I think Yossi's out there, obviously. You got Nyquist out there. And this is gonna be a big face off. You want Ryan O'Reilly on the dot for this one? For sure. Big boom and shot, Yossi. Oh, 1,500 people. Hi, everybody. Hey, everybody who's new, thank you so much for coming in. So happy you're here. Um, you want Ryan O'Reilly if you're Nashville taking this. Um, shots are only 20 to 20. Like, this Nashville really did get their way in terms of low event. Vancouver's a high event team, and they should be. They've got the skill. They got the depth. They got the height. They got the toughness. Um, Nashville's been like, now nah, we're just going to keep it low. We were talking about a parlay today on, on BetMGM. And one of the parlay legs was, oh, that should be a penalty, but it's not going to be because it's playoffs. Um, one of the parlay legs was, would this, would this game be over or under five goals? And I said it would be under. And right now, sorry, not over, under. Six goals was the over, under. So five and a half. And I would have lost the parlay. That's a big goal for the Canucks. Is that Joshua's second goal? Yes. Good for him. Man, former Leaf pick, so you got to love him. And look at that. Good. Canucks fans, you don't have to wake up. You don't have to. This dream ain't over. And, and, and you know, I'll, I'll just say this. Losing the first game of a playoff series stinks, no matter, no, no matter how many times you rationalize it. Uh, and the Canucks have had, like, a storybook miracle amazing year, which they've earned. I didn't want this to end for you. 
I wanted you to enjoy this. I'm so happy for you. This is awesome. Look at the fans. They're going crazy, and they should. They deserve this. It's been way too long since there was real playoff hockey in Vancouver. Sorry, um, pan, um, I almost said Panago. Ha! Uh, uh, pandemic does not count. Nobody likes pandemic playoff hockey. I mean, it was it was better than nothing, but let's be honest. What would you prefer? This is awesome. Good for the Canucks. Somebody just asked, why are, why are these streams so lopsided? Because the Nashville Predators are evil, obviously. Duh. Nobody likes, Na everybody likes Nashville. But they're evil to me. Because... Uh, you too apparently got them to the playoffs, and I think that's BS. Uh, Sadine, Sadine Magic fifteen says uh, you got you should get a Dakota Joshua jersey. Yeah, you know, you know, it did cross my mind. Did cross my mind. I don't know. I don't know. Here we go. Empty net again. Ooh, thought they had a goal. Icing. Well, goalie pulled again. Okay, so yeah, I mean, I get why Brunettes pulled the goalie again. And they really did lose some time in that three minute to two minute and 30 seconds thing. Look at Josh, he's just so jacked. Awesome. Love this. Love this. So producer Nick, who does the CJ show, is there right now with Sportsnet. I can only imagine how much fun he's having. It's going to be a, it's nice and warm outside too in Vancouver. Uh, just checking the uh, Vancouver weather. It's 10 degrees, 10 degrees right now. Come on. How beautiful. 16 seconds to go and the predators eyes the puck. Yeah. So, the, the, so Justin's saying the crowd is just getting louder and louder. Good. This is awesome. This needs to be this way. They deserve this. I hope somewhere Shannon, the hockey guy is just smiling and hanging with his cats unless he's at the game. I hope he's having the best time because he deserves this too. Shannon's, by the way, one of the nicest people in hockey. Love Shannon. Here we go. Last 10 seconds of the game. Ladies and gentlemen, the Vancouver Canucks have won their very first playoff game since the year of our Lord, 2020. Pandemic year. It's the first time that they've won a game at home with butts in seats in the playoffs since 2015. Who was on that team? Daniel and Henrik and Radom Verbata. Verbata, I know. I did that for effect. Some unknown guy named Bo Horvat, too. He was on that team. Guys, great win. Canucks fans, absolutely thrilled for you. That was a great game. They never got down. They never got out of it. Thatcher Demko was laser the entire time. That was awesome. Absolutely awesome. Canucks fans going nuts in the chat. That's what I love to see. That's what I love to see. Yes. And by the way, I'm, I'm going to be with you the entire Canucks series. And I'm going to be with you the entire way with the Canucks. So if you had fun hanging out with me tonight, get ready because Tuesday we're doing this again. Actually, it's Monday right now where I am. I don't know where you are, but it's already Monday. If you're in Vancouver, it's not Monday yet. Monday's nice though. I'll, I'll just tell you. Speaking from the future, it's pretty cool. Congratulations, you guys. This is great. Um, this is a, uh, that, that's a, just a fantastic win for the Canucks. Really, like Rick Tockett, what does he say to them afterwards? Like, you probably as a head coach don't want to compliment your players the super, like, oh, you don't want to go overboard after one game in the playoffs. So you probably say, guys, feel good about it. It's one game. But there's very little about that game that I would be upset about if I'm a head coach. I think maybe perhaps you want to look at strategies to not let Nashville kind of, I don't want to say, um, uh, I, I don't think you want to have Nashville dictate some of the play, the low event stuff. I think you want to try to find a way to get more scoring chances. But the Canucks show towards the end that they're more than able to solve UC Soros. And UC Soros was really good tonight. Really, really good. Russell, Russell Macias. I hope I said your name right. Or Macias. Either way, it's a cool last name, Russell. First playoffs is first since 1970. Home starts 6 0 in the playoffs. Oh, all home teams have won. That's the first time since 1970. All home teams have won so far. Maybe there is something to this home ice advantage thing. 
I don't know. I've never put much stock in it because the Leafs always lose, lose game one. And even when they win game one, they lose the series. It's great. It's great. No dumb penalty. Like, it's, it's okay. Some people in the in the chat are like, oh, the Canucks took too many penalties. Guys, guys, did you see the Leafs game yesterday? Because if you didn't, I think we had four or five dumb penalties and it was in a row. And I think they came in the second period. And if you go look up the box score from yesterday, where did the Bruins score the majority of their goals? Second period when the Leafs were trying to kill penalties. I'm telling you, you guys are good. Clean up the, you, you maybe don't want to have Di Giuseppe take an offensive zone penalty. That's the worst thing that happened to you tonight. tonight. That's that's pretty good. That's pretty good. Um, Canucks fans, how we doing? How the vibes? Are we feeling good? Grape juice, I'm about to bust. We don't want to get grape juice everywhere. That'll stay in the carpet. Um, yeah. Uh, Roman Yossi played 11.03 in the third. He's, that's because he's a beast. Uh, that is, uh, that's awesome. Uh, it would be nice to see the hockey guy in STP, especially if the Canucks go deep. Well, Shannon already knows that he's welcome on our channel anytime. When we have done crossovers with him, um, he's like, he's just a class act. He's just a good guy. It's nice to meet good people. Uh, entertainment do doesn't always lend itself to great people. That guy is a A plus person. Uh, the vibes are vibing. The vibes are high. <laughs> so Dominsky, I know I'm still stressed. <laughs> are you a Preds fan or are you just a stressed out Vancouver fan? Because you're not allowed to be a stressed out Vancouver fan. Tonight, you need to be a celebratory, happy, fun, enjoying the shit out of this Vancouver fan. Now, listen, I love you all. Um, I'm going to roll. And the reason I'm going to roll is this. I got to do, what is your thoughts on Demko, Adam? I think that Demko was spectacular tonight. He was amazing. Dakota Joshua, another guy, spectacular. Um, I have to go and I got to be up early, uh, cause I'm doing a 7:20 AM hit on global news, uh, for SDPN. We're gonna do some sports hits with them. So, um, if you tune into global in the morning, you might see my face. So it's 1249 AM here. Thankfully, there was no overtime, although that would have been fun. And when we do get overtime, it will be fun because we're in this together. I just want to let you guys know, I really, really appreciate you being here. This was so fun. Uh, I want to thank our technical crew, too, because uh, uh, they never get the the credit they deserve. So Robert Malloy, uh, Maddie, Drew, Justin, who has been with me the entire stream, uh, love this. And uh, we will be back on Tuesday night, and we'll do this all the way through again. Lots of fun watching the Canucks. Canucks fans, absolutely thrilled for you. Enjoy this. I want you to be, I want you to spend the next 48 hours, and I know tomorrow's Monday, just floating. Just float all the way through till Tuesday night. All right. And then you can get stressed out again at like 6 p.m. on Tuesday. But for now, you get to float. You are flying like Cole Smith did when Nikita Zadorov lifted him off the ground and threw him over his head. Yeah, that was fun. All right, guys. So I'm getting out of here. Love you all. And I will see you Tuesday night.